What's up? And welcome back to another live stream with Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we're doing an unboxing review of the HP Omen 16. And we have got a ton of things lined up for you today in this live stream. We're gonna start off with doing some top deals. So the best deals across all the different price points. And then we're gonna jump into a comp uh, comparison against the, the best competitors for the HP Omen 16. We're looking at the value that this thing provides at the current price point, also at the sales price point. 899 is how much I paid for this laptop, 899 plus tax. Um, and it was just on sale a few days ago at that price. And so at the current price, 1249, not recommended for these specs for sure, but at $899, it feels like this might be a very, very compelling package. Now, in our analysis of this laptop today, we're going to unbox the laptop, see what's included in the box. We're gonna check out the power adapter. We're gonna check quality control. Um, we're gonna disassemble the laptop and check for upgradability. You know, can you upgrade SSDs? Can you add, uh, swap out the RAM or upgrade the RAM? We're going to look at the webcam quality. We're gonna look at the ports. We're gonna test the keyboard and mouse out. We're gonna find out if it's a glass uh, glass touch pad or a plastic touch pad. Um, we're gonna, of course, test the display, check out how bright it is, check out the color gamut of the display and the contrast ratio. Um, and of course, we're gonna see if there's any ghosting on the display as well when we check out Apex Legends. And we've got over 10 games we're gonna be testing today, uh, assuming all goes well. And uh, that includes some of the latest and greatest titles, as well as some of the most popular esports games out there. Uh, and then at the end, we're going to summarize everything we found out about the HP Omen 16 and decide if the laptop is worth buying at $899 or if it's better going with some of the other laptops that are equally competitively priced. So, um, what's up? I see some people hopping into the chat. Uh, Keenan Wolf asks, have you done the RTX 3060? I have reviewed several laptops with RTX 3060s in them. Um, you know, well over a hundred laptops reviewed now at this point and several of those were RTX 3060s. So, so yeah, but uh, check out my channel history and other videos that I've created if you wanna check those out. So during this time, we'll try to focus most of the questions around the Omen 16, but if we have some downtime, feel free to ask any generic questions about laptops uh, or some of the other top deals that are going on right now out there. So um, yeah, and hello to everyone that comes over from Reddit as well. Love the subreddit, our gaming laptops. Um, so big shout out to that subreddit, lots of helpful people over there. So we're gonna start off with the top thing on the list over here. Top deals and value comparison versus the competition. Let's start into that. This is my laptop, uh, gaming laptops 2023 ranked list. This covers all of the top deals and it's updated every single day. Um, basically, you're gonna be able to find the very best deals right here at the top. That said, not all of these deals are necessarily gonna be the best laptop for everybody. Like the, the MSI Bravo 15, oh my goodness. This thing is so cheap now. It dropped another $100. This was originally a $1,000 laptop. Now it's $699. Um, so, I mean, this is like as cheap as laptops go pretty much. And the display quality is also very low um, as well. Now I've not actually reviewed this one. It's supposed to be a higher wattage RTX 4050, but it's absolutely bonkers GPU performance per dollar. You can see right here, it's at $12.30 now uh, for the GPU performance per dollar, which is just insane. Uh, that's, I think, the highest we've ever seen on any laptop so far on the list. So if you're just after GPU performance and you only have $700 to spend, that's probably the way to go. But in general, I would recommend a laptop with a better display if you can spend a few hundred dollars more still. Okay, so um, the Omen 16. This is the laptop we're actually gonna be reviewing today. It's currently priced at $1249. It just was on sale for $899 though. And I got mine from Best Buy. You can see I purchased it right there on July 5th. Um, this guy's got an i5 processor, 16 gigs of memory, RTX 4050, 512 gig SSD. Pretty sure you can also buy this directly from HP's website um, as well. I don't think, I don't know if we have that on the list link here, but I'm uh, pretty sure they also sell it from their website direct. Now, the big questions about this laptop are build quality, right? If the build quality is good, if the keyboard feels good, the touchpad is good, what other features come with the Omen 16? Does it have G-Sync? Does it have advanced Optimus? Does it have a MUX switch? What are the ports on it? Uh, what are the quality of the ports on it? 
Thermally, obviously we're gonna try to answer that question today. Uh, how good of thermals does the Omen 16 have? Does it overheat? Uh, is it worth considering if you got in that like thousand dollars ish range? Obviously I don't recommend it at 1249. There's definitely better options out there if it's gonna be full price. Don't buy it at 1249. That's like just a really bad deal. Um, okay, so let's talk all the different options. I just talked about the Bravo 15. This thing is super cheap, but just lots of GPU performance for a reasonable price. Acer Nitro 5. This guy, um, I did a recent review on it. You get an RTX 4050, 16 gigs of DDR5, 512 gig SSD, 144 hertz full HD, 70% sRGB, 260 nits was what we measured. And I'm very curious to see how the Omen 16 display does, considering this Acer Nitro 5 here should be in the same ballpark of display quality, I think. I hope that the Omen 16 display is better than the display on the Bravo 15. That's probably my biggest question in terms of like usability, because the, the Bravo 15, obviously that's its biggest weakness is display quality itself. Lenovo Lock 16, this guy, very competitive, definitely has a little bit better screen on it than some of the other laptops. And not only is it a 16 by 10 aspect ratio display instead of 16 by nine, the Omen 16 also 16 by 10 aspect ratio, um, but the, the, the lock also is a 350 nits display. So it's brighter. That's gonna be more visible in more vibrant environments. And it's currently priced at 959, which is a good bang for the buck, but not quite as good as the Omen 16 when it was on sale for 899. So I like, I think the lock is still likely a good option. Um, for, especially it's a good option if um, the other laptops that you're considering are not on sale at the moment you need to buy. The Acer Nitro 5 with a 3070 Ti and a QHD screen, one terabyte SSD, 969. How is this thing still in stock? I don't know. People just don't know that it's a, a freaking deal here. This thing is an absolute steal. Um, I really, really like this uh, laptop in general. I think it is a, uh, hold on one second, I'm getting constant text, so I'm just gonna put on do not disturbed. Okay. Um, okay, so 969, this thing comes with so much graphical power that it makes it very easy to recommend as a temporary deal for while well, it's on sale. The MSI Katana 15, an i5 12450H, RTX 4060, 16 gigs, one terabyte SSD, 144 hertz display, 999. So $100 more than what we're paying for the Omen 16. And it's got the 4060 instead of the 4050, which has a little bit more VRAM, two gigs more in the VRAM and about maybe 15, 10 to 15% more performance. Now, um, some of the other deals that you should check out if you've got a little bit more budget, um, we need to, I need to refresh this. There was one that we just added today, a bonkers deal, the, the, there it is. The Asus Strix G18, one of the first laptops I reviewed this year, really phenomenal as long as you don't have coil wine. Um, you get the i9, the top processor from Intel with this laptop, an RTX 4080, a QHD 240 Hertz 500 nits display that's just gorgeous. And right now it's $400 on sale. Um, and I do think that it will be just a temporary sale. I also wanna point out that there are a lot of sales going on just started today because of the Amazon, um, uh, basically Amazon Prime Day. So a bunch of, a bunch of laptops went on sale today um, and we'll be looking through all those sales and putting the top deals in the top deals section. So just be checking the top deals thing um, all day today and tomorrow and uh, you'll see those new deals come up. And if you're after um, a laptop, you can always use this list to filter down to a specific price range um, and shop and do value comparisons and also look for links on where you can actually buy them because you can't always buy each laptop at every website. So certain websites you have to go to for each different laptop. So hopefully this laptop list is helpful to you. There's a link in the description to this list and you can do your own shopping and comparison, uh, comparing right here on the list itself. Okay, um, the last two sales you should check out. Um, this one, 
very compelling. I'm going to try to do the live stream of the Asus Tough F15 either uh, tomorrow or the next day. RTX 4070, one terabyte SSD, full HD 144 hertz, but it's an RTX 4070 and it's an Asus with an i7 processor, 1149. This, this guy is, I think, a, an incredibly compelling deal all around. Uh, and it's gonna be a really good value for someone that's looking for high-end graphical performance at a reasonable price. And uh, I bought this at $13.99. I think it's a pretty good deal at $13.99. At $11.49, that's a, just a freaking phenomenal deal. So um, I really would recommend this laptop as well. Uh, lots and lots of good deals right now. There's so much going on in the laptop space. Prices are coming down. Summer sales plus, I think all of the uh, people buying laptops are like, that basically there's a surplus supply of laptops right now. Manufacturers are trying to sell them. So we've got so many good deals on gaming laptops, which I love that, cheaper for everybody, right? Um, okay, so that's my value, uh, top deals and value comparison for July uh, 11th, 2023. A lot of new deals this week, love to see that. Um, it's time to get into the unboxing. I'm just gonna check with chat real quick. Um, have you done the GTX 950M? Dude, I don't think I had a 950M. I'm pretty sure I had a 960M, uh, an 850M, a 980. Didn't have an M on it because it was a GTX 980. I don't know, I've done, I've done a few of those laptops. Okay, Eddie says, love you Gizmo, thanks Eddie. Um, what do you think about this laptop? I have too much money. I'm not sure which laptop you're talking about, Sokka. Is this Omen 16 a better deal than the Acer Nitro 5 or the 4050? Uh, Clark, I don't think it will be guaranteed to be better, but it might be extremely competitive. It's kind of like the Acer Nitro 5 with the 4060, uh, with, sorry, with the 4050. I believe you're talking about uh, this one, the one I reviewed. Um, this one, it's, it's a very similar specs. It's almost identical in terms of specs. It's more just about the, the build quality and the fact that this is a 16 by nine aspect ratio display where the Omen 16 is 16 by 10, which usually costs more. Um, and then from there, now we gotta figure out what are the thermals like and all these other factors that we actually need to just get our hands on. Um, you know, without actually getting our hands on them, we can't really definitively say if the Nitro 5 is better or the Omen 16 is better. Uh, Cause maybe the speakers and the webcam and the keyboard and the trackpad, all those things suck on the Omen 16 or something, you know, so we gotta actually get, get in and testing it. Um, and so here's the Omen 16 right here. Um, let's go ahead and just turn this around real quick so you can get an idea of the box. Um, and this is what was shipped. It was shipped in this as the external box, um, which honestly is not as much packaging as I would usually like. I definitely would prefer um, more packaging if possible. And um, so, yeah. And now uh, it did have like this, holding the laptop in place, I don't know. And the laptop was wrapped in plastic and then wrapped in cloth. So, I mean, probably nothing's gonna happen to the laptop. Not like these laptops are super fragile anyway, but uh, I just think the packaging could definitely be improved in terms of safety for packaging. Um, the Omen 16 power adapters right here. So we'll just take that out right at the beginning. So it's a pretty decent sized power adapter. And so it's not super portable, which, you know, some laptops out there that are really cheap, they obviously go with really low power, power, uh, power adapters. And that means that they don't have to like, uh, like the Cyborg 15, it's only a 45 watt GPU you know that thing does not need much juice, so they put a little tiny power adapter with it. So it's nice to see a big power adapter, 230 watts for the power adapter. Let's see if I can zoom in here and get focused. Okay, there you go. So if you wanna look at the details on that, if you wanna order a second one, um, there you go. But uh, the cable itself, all right, so the power cable is only about four feet long for the main power cable, maybe even three, three and a half feet long, not, not a very long power cable. Um, but the power adapter, the power adapters cable is like six feet long. So you get a total reach of around 10 feet. 
So maybe nine and a half feet, something like that, um, which is not bad, but obviously I would prefer it if this cable was a couple feet longer. Um, so a minor con there. All right, we'll set this aside for now. Let's go ahead and take a look at this laptop. Choo -choo. Okay, so again, it was wrapped in plastic when I got it. I did up, update and install all the latest drivers and downloaded a bunch of games. So that way it should be good to go for testing today. Now we've got this nice cloth fabric wrapped around the laptop itself. We've got the Omen logo right there on the top. This is shiny, metallic, silvery looking. Um, we've got a plastic top. You can see the entire rear of the laptop is exhaust, though this part, at least it looks like exhaust, but you can see this part is actually not used for anything, not actually, not actually exhaust, it's like blocked off. Um, so the actual exhaust comes out here and here. I'm not too worried about that in this, uh, I guess, chassis wattage range, because a 4050 doesn't need more than 100 watts of power, so I think it will still be all right. Um, so, and yeah, at least in terms of thermals, uh, along the right side, you can see there's no fan exhaust. Along the left side, we do have another fan exhaust. So you get three fan exhausts coming out of this laptop. Um, and just reviewing the ports real quick, we got a headset power, uh, sorry, headset, adapter port here on the left. So there's a combo. Um, and then we got our power uh, fan exhaust. We've got a USB A and it looks like this is a power type. So like you can power something while the laptop's asleep. At least it has a little power symbol next to it. Then we've got a ethernet port along the right side. We've got our power adapter port right here and HDMI, I believe this is a 2.1, but we're going to check out the details on this. And then we have two USB A's and then we have a USB C that I believe is also a Thunderbolt four, but let's go ahead and double check our information on this. Um, make sure that all of our details are correct. So let's see here. Not sure, I guess we'll just go to uh, Omega 60, RTX 4050. I don't think that the tech specs here are gonna tell us all the ports, but it might. I'm primarily curious to see if this has a Thunderbolt 4 or it's yeah, HDMI 2.1, three USB-A 3.2s and one USB-C 3.2, so that's nice. Now the question is, does it actually have a Thunderbolt port or not? Let's see if I can get on HP's website. Um, so that's the 40. So this is the 4050. This is the Omen Transcend. It's very similar. It just has a different processor. I don't know if we're gonna be able to get one that matches exactly. Hmm. Let me see if this is the exact match or not. This is obviously a more expensive configuration. Um, let's see if the ports look to be the same. This does say Thunderbolt 4 right here. But obviously this is a different laptop as well. But it, it looks so similar. But, okay. So... Obviously there's more expensive configurations of the Omen 16, which might be worth considering if you know, we end up with a really good positive experience on this version of the Omen. Um, notice at the bottom of the laptop, so it's, it's plastic all the way around. We got speaker grills here on the left and right sides. So they're downward firing speakers to the left and right sides. We have air intakes right here um, on the bottom. And if I turn this correctly, you'll be able to see exactly where those are one right here kind of along here and then over here so hopefully this has really good airflow going in and out of this system 
All right, so anything else in the box here we should take a look at. There is a, there's a little uh, product information envelope here. Let's take a look at what's in here. All right, so let me go ahead and zoom in on this. So it's like a picture of the Omen laptop. And if we pull this out, it says find more information. I don't know, not really that important, I don't think. Oh, and there is a whole getting started here guide making, you know, saying plug in your laptop and then press the power button. Um, this does talk about advanced Optimus right here. That makes me think it might have advanced Optimus, which would be very cool. Um, and yeah, so. I'll go ahead and put this right here so in case someone wants to pause it and read that. They can do so if they want to look it up all everything. But um, yeah, it just talks about this being a USB-C port. I don't know. This isn't even the right laptop. So I don't know. I don't know that this even comes with Advanced Optimus. I don't think it does. So I don't think that's the right user guide for this laptop. Interestingly enough, HP kind of messed that up a little bit. This does say this has HP Worldwide, HP Worldwide Limited Warranty and Technical Support. I wonder what, uh, what places in the world it covers, if there's a list of countries anywhere. But, uh, but yeah, there's, there is at least somewhat of a worldwide limited network warranty. Usually those, the way those work is um, if you bought the laptop from a covered country, then you can travel to other covered countries and still get support um, and device fixing if something goes wrong with your device. Um, but obviously it doesn't cover every country in the world, so... Okay, let me check chat. Um, Internet guy, you any chance you're gonna review the Flow X16 2023, please? Oh, I would love to review that. Asus, send me one. Um, we'll see, I might end up actually getting it. What's up, Lance? I see, uh, I see you, your member uh, badge there. Thanks so much for your support. Um, is the Omen 16 a better deal than an Acer Nitro 5? Okay, we already talked about that. Um, is this the same form factor as the Omen 17, just smaller? Uh, not exactly, but it's it's got a lot of similarities. Oh, this is interesting. I'm actually seeing this, and I don't think this is a 16 by uh, 10 aspect ratio on this display. Like, it's we've got a nice big chin here on the bottom, which it makes me wonder what the heck's going on here. Um, okay, so for design, Got a little bit of food on the laptop. Um, okay, so for design, we've got a 16 here. Uh, does it say anything else here? It's just a bunch of symbols. Um, but uh, we got a nice white backlit keyboard, which I do love that. And we'll take a detailed look at the keyboard here in a moment. And um, so, the touchpad, I, I, I'm pretty sure this is a plastic touchpad. It feels plastic. All right. And it does feel pretty good, though, like in terms of stability. It doesn't feel um, cheap to click, but I will say that it does not feel super premium because it's not glass. So um, that's definitely going to be a downside, you know. To be honest, there's not very many laptops in this price range where you get a glass touchpad. Um, so definitely something to keep in mind. Now, um, the, the keyboard layout is pretty unique. HP, I think, is the only laptop manufacturer right now, at least in the gaming laptop space, 
where you get this style of a layout, where you get the arrow keys off to the side. The keyboard itself is not centered up. It's actually a little to the left of the touchpad, a little left of center, which some people will love that. Some people will hate that because um, it does it does impact how you lay your hands on the keyboard itself. So testing the keyboard out. And this is what it sounds like. It's a pretty quiet overall keyboard and it has a nice chunk to the keys. Um, and I gotta say the backlight of the keyboard itself is very clean. It is a very clean, nice looking backlight. Um, you know, some of the, some of the laptops recently that I, I've reviewed, we've had very unclean backlights with like the Strix G16 from Asus. I don't know why, but their, their backlight on that laptop is just a uh, spotty, like the, the actual, like all the symbols don't, don't end up getting lit up properly. And this looks super bright, even in this kind of studio lighting, we can easily see the backlight on this. But as far as I know, this is not a multicolor. It's a white only backlight, but it is super bright. Honestly, I don't mind just having white backlight. It looks clean, it looks professional. Um, and it does time out after about 30 seconds or so of not touching the keyboard, it will disappear, which I'm not sure if you can change that in the settings or not. Um, but it's one of the things that honestly, I like to have my backlight on the keyboard just running all the time. I know that probably wears it out faster, but um, that is one kind of downside. Um, okay, so overall, the keyboard layout is, I think, an effective layout for someone that uses a lot of typing. Obviously, this is not a keyboard layout that includes a number pad. So that is probably one of the biggest cons of the keyboard itself. It's also not a mechanical keyboard, so you're not gonna get the same type of like tactile feedback, kind of loud typing experience. that has got a very shunk feel to it, but that's okay. The, uh, the caps lock has a little key light. The um, F5 key, which is the mute button, also has a little key light on it. Which is a, that's a nice touch. So you can see the caps lock here has a little light. Um, and then the F5 button, you have to press FN to press it, but you can see it does kind of glow orange when it's muted. So when the, the volume is down. Um, and I, I, I do like that. In terms of secondary functions, let's go ahead and zoom in on the secondary functions. Um, so we've got, this is display monitor button for F1. Let's see here. We can, do a little better job framing this. Um, display monitor function over here for F1. We've got display brightness up and down for F2 and three. We've got keyboard backlight brightness on F4. Um, volume mute, volume down, volume up for F5 through seven. Uh, rewind pause, fast forward for F8 through 10. And then let me go ahead and rotate a little to the right. We've got disable touchpad, windows lock, power button, and delete for our last buttons over there. Then over here on the right, we've got an omen button, a calculator hotkey, print screen, insert, home, and page up, page down, and pause which is interesting because I would have rather them put the delete key probably here where it would normally be on a traditional laptop and then put the, the pause up here where the delete is there. I don't know, it's a little different because this is, this is more like the classic keyboard, big keyboard, like desk keyboard style layout um, with the exception of the pause and delete key being flipped. Um, and then of course the arrow keys also are separated off very nicely, which a lot of people are gonna love that, right? So, um, okay, so that's the layout. Um, you can see the touchpad is a large touchpad. It's not a small touchpad, but it's not glass, uh, like I said, and the, the click feels okay. Not super premium on the click, but it'll work just fine. Um, and in terms of functionality, it's just not gonna glide as smoothly as a glass touchpad. You should lose a little bit of the premium feel because it is plastic. Um, okay. Sweet. Done to done. We talked about ports. We talked about the keyboard. Uh, in terms of typing on this, I think most people are gonna enjoy the typing experience on this, no problem. Backlight is great. It's just not very RGBified or gamery. 
I think that covers the keyboard and touchpad and ports pretty well. Um, going back to make sure we're getting everything. It's time to shut the laptop down and disassemble this bad boy. See what the insides are like. So let's do that next. And let me check chat as well. Um, okay. Aero Crawler says, I was debating between the MSI Cyborg 15 and Katana 15 with a 4070. Went with the Katana 15 because of your reviews. Thank you so much. Dude, that Katana 15, by the way, that Katana 15 right now is only 1150 bucks right now. So uh, if you're still within your return period, I would highly recommend price matching so you can get your um, basically a refund on whatever you had paid for it. Um, so usually companies will price match uh, based on whatever deal is currently going on, as long as you're still within the return period. Because otherwise, you as a consumer can just return the laptop you have and buy a new one. So just make sure that's another little tip for you. Um, okay, so I'm grabbing all my tools here. I guess I don't really need to get all of these out just yet. Jumping the gun, grabbing all, all this. We just... We're gonna start with the iFixit toolkit. We're gonna pop this open. Let's see what we need. We need some small Phillips screwdrivers right now. All right, so. Probably around this size. Let's see here. I don't know. I'll let you know what size I end up grabbing. I think this is gonna be a bed, better fit. Nope, I guess this is it. There's very little wiggle with this one. Let's see if this one works. Yeah, that works pretty well. Okay, so I ended up with a uh, PH000 for my Phillips head screwdriver size. Uh, how is the screen wobble? Great question, HD Gaming. We'll take a look at screen flex um, and some other build quality concerns later because I already got some of these screws out. All right. Uh, HT Gaming says, you expect the i5-13420H to bottleneck? Um, would a Ryzen 7640HS be a better choice? Great question. Um, you know, Intel, when they go down to their i5 processors, they're usually really, really good at not bottlenecking too hard because basically Intel processors usually have really high clock speeds, even in the i5, um, they just don't have as many cores and threads. So from a gaming laptop perspective, um, an i5 processor usually doesn't negatively impact your performance too much, but it does depend. We're gonna find out. We've got a lot of games today that we're gonna be testing. Some of them are very CPU sensitive. Um, and also I don't think that this Screwdriver I was using, the screw screw head size is the ideal size, because, yeah. Now, um, seven of these screws, well, six of these screws are the same size, but the back two screws over here on this, these two corners, they are a different size. So, I wanna make sure that you know um, to put the longer screws back in the back corners, otherwise, you may stick a screw all the way through your laptop, which would not be good. <laughs> Pixel says, uh, I've seen this laptop has an RGB keyboard. There's an Omen Light Studio app in it. Um, so some of the Omen 16 laptops are gonna come with an RGB keyboard. Some of them are gonna come with just a white backlight. Now, uh, to the best of my knowledge, this one just comes with the white backlight, but uh, we will check out the, all of the Omen software in today's video and find out exactly um, what it's capable of. All right, so, all right, so here is the Into the AM shirt, haha. -ha. I really love this shirt, it's like 
planets oozing down from the sky into a forest. I don't know. It's pretty cool. Um, there's a link in the description down below if you want to check out Into the AM. 10% off to anyone that's using the link. Now, this is a little tricky. I'm not seeing any major gaps. There's no pop-up screw. So I think I'm just going to try going in the front middle with a guitar pick. Yep, that's a good spot. Turn the guitar pick a little sideways. Popping it up. Yep, making progress. Fairly easy to take this laptop apart so far. Definitely a lot easier than a lot of the laptops out there right now. Um, but you you will want a uh, like a plastic pry tool like a guitar pick here, um, if at all possible. I'm just gonna set that to no neutral. Okay, there we go. And. The last one's coming up. All right, and it's still not coming up. There we go. Okay. I was like, it's not, it's not separating for some reason. There was one little, one more little plastic thing that I needed to uh, separate. All right, so here is the inside of the laptop. Shabam. All right, so let's do our internal analysis of this laptop and see what we got going on here. All right, so the important thing to keep in mind when you look at the thermals of this laptop is that we only have an i5 with an RTX 4050 in it. So it really doesn't need to be too crazy of an internals to give us the full performance of those parts. Um, but... That said, it does look like a fairly simple, on the simple, th a simple side for the thermal design. You know, we got two big heat pipes going across that's shared across both of the fans. The fans are a good size, which is great to see. And this fan does have a dual exhaust. Um, and then in addition, we have a third heat pipe dedicated to just the GPU um, and looks like that's going to help basically ensure the GPU stays cooler. Most likely, I think these thermals are gonna be enough to keep this laptop at a reasonable place and giving us basically full performance of the machine, but we will see, we will have to see. Um, and then, so I do really love to see that we have two SODIMM slots, which means we have fully upgradable RAM. Um, and taking a look uh, at the RAM, if we go ahead and unplug the battery real quick. So unplugging the battery is important if you're going to take any components um, off the motherboard. I would recommend unplugging the battery just because uh, you end up might end up making your uh, laptop fry itself if you drop some liquid on there or whatever. All right, so we're unplugged the battery there. And let's go ahead and just take a look at our RAM that's included. All right, so we've got, uh, let's see if I can stabilize it better. Eight gig, one RX 16 PC5 5600. So we got uh, super fast RAM in here, um, which is great to see. A lot of these budget laptops are only including PC5, you know, DDR5 4800. I'm wondering if this can even run at 5600 with this i5 CPU. It might not be able to. We'll have to find out. Um, but that's the RAM included. It's a Samsung stick, which is nice to see. It is just single-sided and uh, one RX 16, which means it's on the slower side as far as RAM goes, but um, at the same time, it is DDR5. Now, we've got our Wi-Fi stick right here, and so if you want to upgrade that, that's easy to access. I'm trying to see what brand it is. Yep, 
It's an HP Wi-Fi card? No, it's a real tech. So it's a real tech Wi-Fi card, which is uh, usually on the slower side as far as Wi-Fi uh, memory cards or Wi-Fi cards go. So you can always upgrade that for 20 bucks. Um, we have our SSD right here. I'm not too SSD and I'm looking if there's any other upgrades here for if you want to put a second SSD in and I am not seeing anything. Um, let's go ahead and just pop this SSD cover off at least and see what type of SSD it is. Oh, we've got another. So this SSD cover has two screws on it. Is it three screws? No, it's two. There we go. All right. And uh, the cover right now is like attached to the SSD. See if we can get that off without damaging anything. So it has this black shroud probably on the bottom part. Okay, so it looks like the cover. Yeah, so the cover actually is fully surrounding the SSD, which is interesting. That's usually not the case. So the bottom of the SSD is just a single sided SSD. This is turning into quite the craft project, getting this SSD apart. Um, and if you do need to pry this out, I would recommend using a plastic pry tool, not a metal one. There we go. All right. So here is our SSD. It is an SK Hynix brand. Uh, and I believe it's a 512 gig. Yeah, 512 gig SK Hynix. So SK Hynix, that's certainly a, um, a popular up and coming brand for sure. Um, very interesting to me how, how fast SK Hynix has grown in popularity. Um, so putting this back together is going to be interesting. Pretty sure it was just like this. Mm hmm I think it's just a hair. It's just a hair incorrectly lined up here. So it doesn't want to come together. Or maybe it is fully together. I don't know. It's, hard, it's kind of hard to tell, honestly, if we're fully together correctly or not. But if you do need to move anything, obviously use plastic tools instead of metal tools. So I'm just going to scoot this back just a little bit because I think it was a little bit too far forward there. Okay, so actually I'm going to take the, I'm going to take this out. There we go. All right, I'm going to make sure the SS, I'm going to make sure the SSD is first applied to the top because that's really what locks it in. And now we're going to apply the bottom shielding. Put this back on. Um, I got to say, I don't know if a double-sided SSD would fit inside of this. Probably not. So if you're upgrading your SSD, you might not be able to use this shroud. Okay, so this needs to go inside. Just like that. Just like that. Okay, and you really wanna make sure this hole is lined up at the back. It wasn't lined up the first time that I was putting it back together. 
All right, so that all looks correct. Yeah, I'm guessing if you're gonna keep this, if you're gonna use this shroud again, at least the bottom panel, um, you probably won't be able to use the bottom panel if you use a double-sided SSD, that'd be my guess. All right, and it's a bit awkward putting this back in now. Very awkward putting it back in because of this connector that's in the way. And these metal fins too. All right, I'm gonna put these metal fins to the side. There we go. All right, finally. I think we finally got it back in place, jeez. Um, <laughs> yeah, Clark says I would have, I would have checked the SSD brand through software rather than taking it apart like that. That's a probably would have been a smarter idea, but I mean, this is kind of fun and hands on and it helps anyone that needs to upgrade the laptop, understand all of the aspects of like swapping out the SSD, you know, cause how else are they going to know that swapping out this SSD might be a real challenge for certain types of SSD, like double-sided SSDs, for example. All right. That looks correct. And I'm pretty sure that we are seated in there properly now. Um, I kind of want to double check it though. Cause it kind of looks like it's partially come up. I really dislike these little metal things on each side. Like there's a uh, little metal pieces on each side here that are pretty annoying to deal with. I think those things are causing us grief, actually. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, take the little metal wing off, actually. Because it doesn't want to, uh, it doesn't want to let me. Put the laptop back together with the wing on there. So that little metal wing, it's attached to the bottom part of the chassis. Okay, I got both of those little metal pieces off now. All right. Now let's see if we can get it to uh, correctly mount into the laptop. Yeah, that appears to be better. So obviously the SSD needs to slide in successfully and now you can see it's also mount acting like it's mounted into the SSD slot because I'm pretty sure it was not actually mounted in. It was just sitting on top of the SSD slot before. Obviously not a great position to be in if you're trying to get an SSD that's actually gonna work in your system. That's sitting nice and flush and flat now. All right, <clears throat> so overall, um, I think this laptop has a decent internal design. You get the upgradability. Um, you can easily replace the SSD. Uh, the battery itself is a, 
Do, 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 do. Looking for the watt hours. It's a 70 watt hour battery. So the battery itself could be bigger, um, but for a budget system, that's a pretty decent size uh, battery. Um, I wish this had a second SSD slot and I wish it had a better Intel uh, Wi-Fi card. But overall, the, the layout is nice and I do love that you can upgrade both of the RAM sticks quite easily. Um, and thermally speaking, this is definitely not an overkill, uh, overkill system. Thermally speaking, um, the speakers are Bang and Olufsen, and there are downward firing one and two uh, on the left and right sides. You can see them right there. Um, and yeah, so that's uh, that's the, that's the internals of the of the system. Now we got to take this thing, put it back together, and do some more real testing benchmarking see what the temperatures are like that's probably my biggest question right now so i'm just gonna i usually take this and scrunch it together inside my lap here it's usually easiest squeezing it gently together rather than Try to do it when it's laying flat on the table. Because when it's in your hands like this, it's a lot easier to tell if you fully popped it together or not, because you can squeeze from both sides. But it's looking good. I think this is, this is looking good. All right, so time to put our screws back in place. Um, Lewis said SSD first, then metal plate. Um, unfortunately, there's a metal plate on the top and bottom of the SSD, so you got to put it together first before you can put the SSD back in place. Um, the SSD cover is acting as a heat sink. Uh, yes, and there is some thermal, um, there was some thermal tape as well inside of that metal cover. So that'll also act as a little bit of a heat sink um, for bursts of writing, reading and writing. All right, so we got our two big fat ones that need to go into the corners. There's only eight screws on this laptop, which is a, a very minimal amount, which I, I, I like only having eight. Um, I think it's enough. Well, at the same time, you know, it's not too complicated to take the laptop apart. Did he plug in the battery? Thanks, Lewis. <laughs> Thanks, Lewis. Uh, you're right. I did not plug in the battery, I don't think. I appreciate the qu chat coming in clutch here. I have done, I have not plugged in the battery. I don't know how many times. I've done it several times on live stream, like at least three or four times. So chalk it up to another way. Uh, chalk it up to another one. So we got to plug the battery back in real quick, and then we can put the chassis back together. All right, so we're going to see how quickly I can take this thing apart now, all right? Now that I've done it once, I can usually do it a lot faster because I'm usually really cautious the first time. Because I don't want to break anything, especially if I forgot to take a screw out or couldn't see one because it was underneath a rubber cover or something. But now that I've already done it once, it's pretty easy to get it off again. There we go. Beautiful.
There it is. Okay, so bottom is off again. And now we're gonna go ahead and put our battery back in. Huzzah. Okay. Battery has been re put back together again. Thank you so much, Louis or Louis. <laughs> I have done that myself a million times, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, anyone that's taken the laptop apart and put it back together, and if they normally, uh, you know, if they normally take the battery and unplug it every time they take a, put an SSD in or swap the memory or something, it's got to happen to you sometime. You'll just forget to plug the battery in and then you'll like unplug the laptop and you're like, wait, why did it just turn off? What? What the heck? <laughs> and then you're like, oh, the battery. So pretty, pretty funny. All right. So there's one, there's two, here's number three. The long one in the corner and then two short ones in the back. Middle, and then we'll do a long one in the other corner. Huzzah, okay. So, and normally I would also recommend just double checking all of them to make sure they're flush and good. Also, I saw there was a little section there that I didn't pop together, I highly recommend double checking to make sure you've popped everything together before you screw everything tight. But it looked like it would probably pop together so I just kind of put a little pressure and it popped right back together, no problem. Okay. Voila. All right, so uh, someone was wondering about build quality. Let's go and do our flex test. All right, so screen. That seems pretty solid, but not like amazing rigidity. Like I'm picking up the laptop when I move it left and right. Like you can see it, I'm like literally picking up the laptop. So that's a lot of force on the laptop itself. Um, the, the hinge can go all the way back and lay flat. So that's 100% of the way back. And it does have a slight wobble when you let it go but it does feel pretty stiff when you move it through the primary range right here. It feels pretty stiff when I let it go. You know, if you just, you can bounce it a little bit, but overall it's pretty stiff. You know, you can pretty much do that to any laptop, even the Blade 18 here, you can see. But uh, yeah, it feels pretty stiff. The hinge design itself, it's hard to know if it's gonna be a perfect, uh, in terms of long-term reliability, but I suppose I'm guessing as long as the uh, application for the glue and the screws and everything were done correctly, it should be all right. Now, very interesting that this display is, you know, it's Omen 16 and yet I think this is a 16 by, is this 16 by nine aspect ratio display? I mean, we've got a big old chin here. I don't know. Sean with the $10 super chat. Love your content. Can't wait for the Legion Pro 7i under bolt optimization guide. Under, under volt, I'm pretty sure you meant under volt. Yeah, uh, thanks so much for the super chat and thanks for reminding me about the Legion Pro 7i. I need to spend some time um, optimizing that thing. There's a lot of questions around it. Uh, that, yeah, because it, it, the software custom mode and all that doesn't really work very well for some reason. Okay, flex test on the laptop itself. Let's go. All right, so. Uh, the plastic keyboard deck definitely has some flex here. 
But I'm pushing, like, so I'm pushing pretty hard, right? Like, that's the important thing to keep in mind during this test. Um, like, this is me pushing gently, right? I'm pushing gently right here. If I push hard, it does have some flex there. Um, I think, you know, under normal circumstances, it's going to flex a little bit under your wrist here. This middle area is going to flex a pretty decent amount. The touchpad, obviously, is going to be, you know, you, you click it in and it, it touch pads or whatever, you know, like a touchpad does. Does touch paddy things. All right, going around the left side here. Less, there's less flex over here on the left side, which is nice to see. Um, I would say this is a, certainly above average amount of flex, which I don't love. I don't love that um, for sure. I'm definitely above average. Um, wish this was more rigid. There probably needs to be another support here from the chassis design perspective. Going through the middle, this is the keyboard itself is about average in terms of flex, not like amazing, not terrible. Um, along the top here, very rigid along the top, lots of support along the top there. It's primarily right here on the right hand wrist rest where I would say the flexibility is a little too, a little bit more than I would say is ideal and uh, recommended. Okay, cool. Um, so let's go ahead and get this laptop turned back on again. And I'm gonna switch the camera to this one so you can see all the things we're gonna talk about today. So, next up, we're going to do our display test, speaker test, and fan noise testing. So, let's find out. Ooh, I just discovered something interesting. Um, let me switch camera so you can see it. The webcam actually has a physical shutter that you can use to cover the web camera. I really love that. That's so cool. Um, awesome. So I like not a lot of laptops, some laptops this year are coming with that, but I, I do love a physical cover on your webcam for just 100% pri uh, privacy confidence, you know? All right, so the laptop has not turned on, which makes me wonder if I did did put the SSD in correctly or not. Let me try turning it on again. So there is a power button right here on the Omen, uh, like a like a a little white power button here. There's also a power button indicator or a power light indicator for the uh, the AC adapter. Um, so you can see that we are plugged in right here and we do have a light indicating. So I would say the most likely scenario is that the SSD is uh, not seated correctly if we are not turning on right now. SSD shouldn't cause boot failures. Uh, well, if the SSD, um, the S if the SSD is not seated correctly, it could cause it to um, not f turn on, basically. And we know it was working uh, right before this. So, FN display button. I can see the display is uh, lit up. Okay, so look at that. CMOS checks some. Okay, I didn't get to read it all. Uh, <laughs> oh, I can see a little dot, dot, dot up here. Okay, there's the omen. This might just be happening because we unplugged the battery of the laptop. So.
Yay, okay, everything is good. Yeah, my guess is that it's just an error. It just errored out because of the uh, the battery being unplugged, um, and basically did a, a like a little soft reset of the seam, like of the laptop, which made it take a little longer to boot up. Okay, let me go uh, switch cameras. Okay, all right. We also need to check our camera quality. So let's go ahead and do. Camera quality test next. Okay. You know, um, actually, I will say that I think this is better quality. It, my camera is not picking it up very well for some reason. It's like looking. A little too dark or, I don't know. Let me see if I can get it to focus on the, focus a little bit better or something. Cause on my, on right on here, I can see that, uh, I can see my beard hair pretty well. Like, and it's, it's not very, uh, it's got a little bit of noise to it, but it's actually pretty dang good detail. So overall, I, I think the webcam is above average for a, a camera that's uh, a gaming laptop camera. And it looks a little bit reddish. Okay, that's probably a little closer to what I'm seeing on the screen right there for a webcam quality. As far as webcam quality goes, I give it probably like a seven out of 10, six and a half, seven out of 10, uh, where most gaming laptops are like a six probably. So a slightly above average webcam. Um, I like to see that. And let's go ahead and move on to our other tests that we've got. So let's do our speaker test next. Let's go ahead and move this. You know, like as far as hinges go, like these style of hinges, I think are more likely to, f to fail if they're not done correctly. Uh, and there's no way as a reviewer for me to know, you know, if they're done correctly because I can't see the internals, right? Um, so, and the primary issue of course is the weak point right here and right here. Uh, if it doesn't connect to the display itself very well, if it's only glued or not screwed very well or something like that, that's where it might break or, or have a failure. Most likely, I think the hinges on here are just fine. Not a high point to worry about, but I just wanted to clarify here that there's just, there's only so much you can know as a reviewer. And that's certainly um, an area that you can't really know if it's going to fail until like a two years from now or whatever, you know, if a lot of people uh, having, you know, encounter something that causes it to fail. So, but, um, but yeah, like, and a, a really strong example of a good hinge design that almost for sure won't fail is like the Blade 18 hinge design, which is the entire, you can see it on the camera right here. Uh, like the entire laptop display is attached to a hinge here. That's like a, a rod that goes through um, right here. So yeah, like the Blade 18 is an example of a really good hinge design that almost for sure won't fail. Whereas the, uh, the, the hinge designs where they have two points of contact like here and here, it all depends on how well designed the internals are here. So, um, okay. Perfect, let's move into our speaker test. Do, do, do. I need my decibel sound meter. All right. Perfect, and also, let me go ahead and get this mouse plugged in to this laptop. Perfect. 
All right, and we're gonna go to music and we're just gonna make sure our volume is up all the way. And inside of here, so inside the Omen software, I'm just seeing if there's any, are there any speaker options here? I'm not seeing any kind of speaker. I'm just looking to see if there's any kind of like uh, speaker EQ apps or something like that, you know, to change the audio balance levels. There's obviously the HP Omen software and I'm not seeing anything else in here so far. Sometimes the laptops don't have them. A lot of the newer ones this year did have um, like speaker optimization apps to like maximize the quality of the speakers, but I'm not seeing anything right there. And inside the Omen software here, I'm not seeing anything either. Don Don says speakers will be bad. What do you expect? I expect them to hopefully be at least average but maybe they'll be terrible. Maybe they'll be better than average. I don't know, we'll see. Okay, so Peter Spacey Roar. Um, let's zoom out. Let's go ahead and get the camera to the right angle. Forty-four point five decibels is our baseline level for our volume right now in the room. Hold on. Hold on one second. We're gonna reset that just cause I wanna make sure the door is closed. I have the fan going out there blowing air into the room. So, okay. Here we go again. Forty-one point eight is our baseline, or right around forty-two decibels. Uh, here we go. Well, especially during the early bass, the bass was sound very clear and good. But then like once all the other sounds came in, it kind of got a bit more muddled. So uh, like the mids and highs didn't sound as good there in the transition. Um, and also the overall volume is not as loud as some of the more expensive laptops as well. So let's check out Faded Aeon Half-Life. Those mids and highs actually sounded pretty, pretty decent. Um, better than honestly most other nine hundred dollar laptops for sure. La la la, love you like by Deuce Williams. Okay, so uh, yeah, I mean, I would say those speakers were 
we hit I, I saw like 86 87 decibels on the decibel meter which is pretty good amount of volume um for you know a laptop of this size um and i would say the speakers are probably right around like an eight out of ten overall um like some of the more expensive laptops this year like the blade 18 the, basically the highest rated ones aside from apple speakers you know like going up into the like the closer to 90 decibels range um and much better clarity overall and more bass ishness to them um the key really i think is that the once everything is really like going like the full sound is going with the bass and the mids and the highs that's when it kind of breaks down a little bit more but uh, when it's just the mids or it's just the highs or it's just the bass, it sounds really good, but it's really when it all comes together. And so certain sound environments, certain types of music won't sound as good with these speakers, I think. Um, uh, that's, I think, probably basically my diagnosis of it right now. So, yeah, I give them an 8 out of 10, which is above average. The average being most of the laptops um, around $1,000 or less. Most of those laptops are going to be more like a 7 out of 10. So this is above average speaker quality. That's good. Um, yeah. This would be decent for watching YouTube or if you're trying to play. Uh, I think it'd be pretty good for playing games. Uh, as long as you're not running the fans super loud. Right? If you run the fans super loud, it's not going to be as good. Um, so next up, I want to test uh, the display. All right, so display testing time. Do to do. Whew. The Spider Five Elite fell out of the box, but I caught it with my knees, so it's all good. Um, all right. So this display is supposed to be rated for 250 nits, which is obviously not super bright. I don't know the color gamut of it though. That's kind of like the bigger question mark uh, surrounding this display and the contrast ratio as well. And so we're gonna about to find out what the display's color gamut and contrast ratio is. I gotta put the, um, my code in real quick for the license. And that'll just take a minute. Do, 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 do. There it is. Mm -hmm. All right. So the display, I think, is arguably the one of the biggest downsides of if you of going with an RTX 4000 series laptop, nearly all of the new RTX 4000 series machines come with a sub 300 nits display with usually a lower color gamut. Like think about the MSI Bravo 15, the Lenovo Lock. That's more than 300 nits uh, rated for 350 nits, but the color gamut on it is not as good. Like it's, it's not a very good color gamut display, um, even if it is bright. So there are trade-offs in nearly every single RTX 4000 series laptop under a thousand bucks. So I'm hoping, oh, I didn't make sure. Okay, we're at 100% brightness. Um, my hope is that this, this laptop gets at least around 65 to set, like at least 70% sRGB. Like 70% sRGB gives it a decent baseline of color and it matches the display quality to the Acer Nitro 5 as well. So that's kind of my goal right now. Um, I was looking for my tape measure, but because I want to measure this display corner to corner and I want to see what does the display actually measure out to because 
Is it a 16 by 10 aspect ratio or 16 by nine? Okay, well, that'll be answered by the actual pixel, you know, what the pixel range is, so. Um, what about the Lenovo 7i Pro, Pro 7i? Uh, the speakers on that are pretty good. I think those were like 8.7 or something like that. I have to, I can't remember, it's off the top of my head. But it was, I think, above 8.5 um, for my speaker rating for the Pro 7i. Uh, and definitely better than this. Is there any control software for the HP laptops? Yes, there's the Omen Hub, HP Hub or whatever. And we will be going over all of that in detail, how to manipulate the laptop and change the performance settings and all of that. So just, just bear with me. We'll get there soon enough. Yeah, we'll check the display resolution, Donna. That's what I was trying to say. Okay, so there's 100% display brightness there. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be reaching 300 nits. It's supposed to be only rated for 250 nits according to HP, but, you know, we'll find out here in a moment. It doesn't seem too, too bad to me, like at a glance, you know. But let's see. Okay, so uh, the important thing to keep in mind with my display checker tool, the Spider 5 Elite, this guy, um, this thing basically uh, underestimates color gamut by around like seven to eight percent. So whatever ratings we get here, you're gonna have to add another seven to eight percent to them. Um, that that brings it in line with what most other color checkers will will test. Okay, so it got 63% of sRGB, which brings us to about 70% sRGB total, uh, about 58% Adobe, or 55% Adobe RGB and 55% of the P3 color gamut. So 70% sRGB, not amazing, right? This is, a, this is gonna be a budget-ish display for sure. Not as bad as the, it's, maybe only a little bit better, right? Than the, the MSI Bravo and the MSI laptops. Whoa, our brightness, 324 nits. That's brighter than I thought it was gonna be. That's brighter than what HP advertises. HP average advertises 250 nits, but this is 324 nits. That's awesome. And the contrast ratio is actually 1,020 to one. Okay, so the weakness of this display is definitely in the, um, the color gamut range being only 63% of Adobe RGB. Um, you know, that's just a little bit below, that's definitely below what is ideal if you have the money, right? Because if you spend a little bit more money, you can get 100% sRGB here, um, or it'll, it'll say 92, and then it'll be basically be 100 on the, some of the other displays. Um, that are rated, that are truly rated for 100. So 325, uh, 324 nits brightness is higher than I expected though. So that's a plus. Overall, when you compare this to most of the other budget systems out here, this display is better. Now the question is, it's better because of this brightness. 324 nits is, like I said, it's, it's mainly better because of this brightness. Um, so this makes it, this makes the display, I think much more, competitive against the Lenovo lock because that's rated for 350 nits. So this puts this display in the same ballpark of display quality as the Lenovo lock. Also, this is a 16 by nine aspect ratio display. Look at that 1920 by 1080 P resolution. So that's, that explains why we got the bottom chin. Just like I kind of pointed out at the beginning. Um, I thought this was a 16 by 10 aspect ratio because all of the new 16 inch laptops are 16 by 10, but this is a 16 by nine, 16 inch laptop. Interesting, super interesting. Okay, uh, let's check the backlight bleed and we'll do a quick example video of some of the display, um, like some, some 4K video basically. Let's see here, so we'll do photos, that's fine. 
Go big. We'll make it big. There we go. All right. So uh, now we're going to turn all these lights off. And I can show you the keyboard backlight as well while we're doing this. Okay, so, uh, wow, there's, there's very, I'm going to scoot the camera over a little bit. There's very little backlight bleed to this laptop. Trying to get this to focus. There we go. Um, so I've got RGB going on behind me a little bit. That's the colors you're seeing here. There's not actually any uh, black light bleed problems in the corners or anything there. Just a tiny little bit of black light bleed, but very, very minor. Um, overall, that is uh, excellent black light bleed compared to most. Um, okay, so here's the keyboard. Let me change the camera angle. And that's what the keyboard looks like in a dark room that is so bright and so easy to see the keys for a backlight. Uh, I would say that's definitely above average in terms of keyboard backlight clarity is what I'm going to, I'm going to call that. Um, and in terms of looks, it looks very clean on the backlight, um, clean and bright. Okay. Awesome. So perfect. Let's go ahead and get these lights back on again. And time to go into our fan noise testing with decibel meter. All right, so we lower the camera down a little bit. And let's go ahead and pull this around. Get this plugged in. Perfect. All right, and now we're going to go ahead and get Time Spy opened up in the background. So we're going to be using Time Spy as our load to be able to um, see how loud the fans are, as well as to see our thermals at any of the different fan profile levels. Because sometimes, yeah, you can run the laptop quiet, but it's only running at like 10 watts and it's like you can't even play a game in quiet mode uh, and other times you can totally play games and the fans are really quiet as well so um you're going to be very interesting to see how this laptop stacks up uh louis says omens have always been a good budget laptop hope they got I'm happy they got rid of all the red madness. Yeah, I, I think this uh, new brand design where they're not focusing on all of the the red overtones and everything, like it was it was a bit much. I would agree with you there. Um, and I think it does look cleaner now with better overall um, quality. So I, I do love to see that. All right, so... We have the uh, MSI Afterburner open in the background. Um, taking a look at the Omen control software real quick so you can understand what our fan profiles look like. Um, so this is the Omen Gaming Hub. Um, interesting. Which light is causing the reflect? There we go. Okay. Um, this is the Omen Gaming Hub, and this is... HP software for controlling the laptop. Uh, you've got inside of here, network booster. This allows you to prioritize certain applications if you want the laptop to download. Um, if you want the laptop to download certain things faster or prioritize a certain game that you play. Performance allows you to switch between eco mode balanced mode and performance mode. Um, man, this display right now is looking a bit blown out. I think it's because of my camera here. I don't know. I think I'm just gonna, 
I think I'm gonna try to just turn down the brightness of the display a little bit. Okay. I think that, man, it is. Well, you can easily see what I'm, what I'm pointing out at least. So um, eco, balanced and performance mode are the three that we're gonna be doing. There is also a thermal control option, which is auto, maximum and manual. So in manual, you can set the system fan to be a specific RPM if you want just to say like, go to this RPM and just stay there. Um, so you want to be maximum fans. It's easy to set the maximum fans to be, uh, to just go there. You can also set a dynamic fan curve, which is this guy right here, allowing you to raise the temperature or raise the fan noise at certain, uh, at certain temperatures. And so this allows you to have more dynamic control of everything. You know, notice that like there are certain minimums, right? If it's if the laptop is reaching 90 degrees Celsius, the fans need to be going at least 66%. See if I can get it to show. And it's not showing up very well on the camera. Um Like it's overblown when I, let me just try lowering the exposure a lot. There, so you can see uh, you need to set the minimum fans curve to 66% or 90 degrees Celsius or at 90 degrees Celsius, it must be that. Um, and then at 85 degrees Celsius, it can be down to 32% though. Um, so that's like kind of minimum fan noise. But you'd obviously probably want to put this up to like at least the 50% range is what I would guess. Something like, you know, like right in that range. You also have uh, CPU and GPU because they're like each of the fans, remember inside the laptop, each of the fans uh, are separate. So when you switch between these, I think this controls one fan and this controls the other fan when you switch between these two. So it's kind of cool that you can actively swap back and forth uh, between them. Um, but anyway, we're going to be doing auto fan and max fans today. Uh, so we're going to start with auto fans with the three modes, eco balanced and performance. And then we're going to switch to max fan to see, you know, just maximum possible fan noise. So uh, we're going to run time spy in a loop. Graphics test two, enable window mode, um, looping enabled, and all of that is good. Let's go ahead and run custom. I'm also going to go ahead and pause singing for 24 hours so that it doesn't affect our benchmarks. And close Spider Elite, cool. Okay, so Time Spy is loading up. Okay, and bingo bongo, very good. Now we're gonna come back all the way back here and we're going to set our decibel meter. So we're gonna start out in eco mode. All right, interesting. Also notice that we're in hybrid mode. I thought we would be in discrete graphics mode so um, originally I had this set to discrete. So you can switch right here between hybrid, which allows you to have productivity, media consumption, internet browsing with better battery life, uh, switching to the integrated GPU or discrete mode, which allows you to run just the NVIDIA GPU only with no battery, but that also helps boost performance just slightly. Now, if I go to the NVIDIA control panel, let's see if we can actively set it I don't think we will be able to, but maybe we can actively set this. Yeah, so there is no uh, option in here. There is no option in here to control the GPU. So there's no advanced Optimus, 
but there is a MUX switch. So let's go ahead and restart and put this into discrete only GPU mode for all of our testing today, which is gonna give it the most possible performance. Um, Brock says, I had the HP Omen 16, but had to return it because there was a horrible, <laughs> oh my God. You keep getting me to respond to crappy comments. You always say something smells bad. Okay, we're gonna just hide you. That's a troll, y'all. It's a pretty funny troll, but yeah. All right. Uh, Shibisho says, it has a muck switch with no advanced osment. That is correct. Um, LSP says, this laptop along with legions look clean and nice, able to be used in somewhat strict environments when all RGB is turned off. So, um, LSP, I had a Legion Pro 7i with 4090, Afterburner 225 OCs already artifacting. Games would more than likely crash at that setting or probably VRAM OC of 1000 caused the problem. Interesting. My camera's color balance appears to be off on this camera for some reason. Okay. Let's go ahead and get 3D Mark open back up again. I wonder how I can get this color balance reset. Okay, I think it's better now. Um, I just had to show it like a good white section um, of the display. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna press the Omen button. That launches our Omen Gaming Hub for controlling the laptop. Inside here, our graphics switcher, which this requires a reboot to switch between hybrid mode and discrete mode. We are in discrete only mode right now. In performance mode, um, we're going, like for our power mode, we're gonna be in eco. All right, so we're gonna switch to eco here as soon as uh, the time spy is done loading up. We're just gonna let it be in performance mode while we're loading things so it goes a little bit faster. 9K GPU incoming. I don't know about 9K. Maybe with an overclock, it'll reach 9K. But I'm hoping at least 8,500. That would be my hope. Um, right now, we're not even going to run the test for, for getting a score. We're going to run it just for our fan noise testing um, and thermal testing. So that's our priority right now. So we're going to go to eco mode. So notice that when you're in eco mode... Thermal control adjustment is not available. Isn't that interesting? Um, so you cannot set your power mode. Under balanced, you can. And under performance, you can. But when you're in eco mode, you cannot. Uh, you can also switch this button right here. that lets us enable auto switch to automatically activate eco mode when AC is unplugged uh, or when using a low wattage power adapter. Interesting. That's pretty cool. Um, but it's not something I would probably use. I would rather uh, have complete control over it. Me personally, right? So let's get Afterburner running. All right, so there's Afterburner. Uh, 
All right, and uh, let's go ahead and I'm just gonna turn my fan. Quieter out there. All right, we're gonna go ahead and zoom out here. So right now the room ambience is about 43 decibels. That's our ambient noise in the room, 43 decibels. Um, and honestly, that's with the fan going. Like we're in eco mode right now. The laptop has been running um, for about a minute in the test. Um, yeah, I, it might have been 42 decibels, I guess, uh, without the fan. Like we, we tested it earlier. What was it? 41 point five or something with the door closed, uh, 41.9 or something. So 43 decibels is like one decibel louder now that these fans are running and I can barely hear the fans running. Okay. So, well, I can hear the fans spinning up just a little bit more now. Forty-four point eight right now in eco mode. Let's go ahead and check out our temperatures and our wattages. Look at that. We're getting eighty-one watts, right around eighty watts of power to the GPU. Our GPU boost clock is at twenty-three seventy, twenty-four forty-five, twenty-four sixty. We're utilizing the GPU one hundred percent, sixty-six degrees for our GPU temp. That's really good. Um, I'm actually like, I'm actually pretty impressed right now. Let's go ahead and switch this to be a little bit bigger on the font size. I usually do that. There we go. All right. So, uh, wow. Okay. And our temps are really, really good. Even though we're in low fan quiet mode. So, I mean, our, our, our CPU is only sipping 15 watts approximately. Our GPU is doing 80 watts, but really good temps between the CPU and the GPU right now. That is phenomenal. It's been running now for at least two to three, four minutes. Um, our wrist rest on the left side is completely cool as well. Our WASD keys are just slightly warm. Center of the keyboard, slightly warm. Along the top of the display, it's definitely warm. Not too hot to touch, but definitely warm. Uh, Todoroki says probably 7,500 for GPU score. I think it'll be a little bit higher than that. Um, but keep in mind that right now we are in eco mode, which is the low power mode. So I'm hoping we're gonna see even higher GPU um, performance, you know, in performance mode here coming up. Okay. So focusing again on our fan noise, let's now that we've gone for several minutes, let's go ahead and see what we're at. I'd say 44 and a half decibels in eco mode. That's really good. Okay, we're gonna to switch to balance mode. Switching over to balance mode now. All right, again, still on auto fans. All right, so as long as we're doing at least 90 watts to the GPU, we're gonna be close to maximum possible performance on the RTX 4050 in this laptop. Um, our boost clock is doing 2,500, 2,500 approximately. Our GPU temperatures have gone up 70 degrees, uh, 270 degrees, not up 70 degrees, from about 64 to about 70 degrees. Um, and that happened fairly quickly. I can also hear that the fans ramped up a little bit louder. Not much, but just a little bit louder. So 
we're going to hear what our fan decibel meter is picking up here in just a moment. I just want to give the laptop a chance to run for at least a minute or two so that the auto fans can kick into however um, loud it's going to get. Still fairly quiet. Yeah, I would agree. Still fairly quiet as a, as a system chassis. So very interesting, um, the fans ramped up to about 48 decibels and then they ramped back down into like the 45, 46-ish decibel range. Um, I'm guessing it's because like a temperature of, of something up here went over 75 degrees or something and then that triggered the fans to ramp up just a little bit and then the, the fan noise came back down almost immediately after only a few seconds of it being at a higher fan speed. Um, Overall, very impressive. Uh, I, I think it's very impressive overall um, fan noise versus performance level. Got a little louder again. All right, so let's go ahead and try performance mode. Performance mode on auto fans. Notice that we're doing 95 watts of power to the GPU, so we got an additional five watts of performance into the GPU. Our boost clock is now hitting 2580 for the GPU boost, which is, it's a little bit better, about 80 megahertz more. Um, our temperatures have also gone down because they were kind of in the low 70s to mid 70s, between 70 to 75. Now our GPU temp is down to 64. It dropped like 10 degrees while well, at the same time going up in performance. So I do really like that, obviously, but the louder fans are louder. So if you're after minimal fan noise and still almost as much performance, like it's not gonna be that much of a performance difference here, probably like a 5% performance at most between balanced mode and performance mode. So if you want a quiet all around system, uh, you're still getting really good temps here. Um, with at least with the, um, you know, with the balance mode, uh, let's go ahead and see how loud performance mode is. So 56 and a half decibels approximately. Um, for the performance mode on auto fans, I'm going to go ahead and kick it up to maximum fans now. Here we go. So maximum fans sounds like it's the same. Like it went up 100 RPM, I think. Okay, so there's our, there's our fan noise tests and essentially performance wise, you are gonna get more performance out of the, the RTX 4050 or whatever GPU you get in the Omen 16 if you have a, uh, if you do the higher performance mode, but it won't make that big a difference it doesn't seem like, at least in the 4050 um, between balanced and performance. So 
Um, that gives us a good test. So let's go ahead and do our actual benchmark for Time Spy now. We're going to do a normal run with no demo. Get this I'm gonna get this laptop set up correctly um, and we are gonna do our test today in maximum performance mode just like I do with all laptops but uh, with this laptop thermally acoustically um, it's not gonna make a huge difference if you run it in max performance mode or like balance mode so I I do that's one really great thing about the new RTX 40 50 60 and 70 you can run them really quiet and fairly cool even with uh the rtx uh even in like like quieter fan profiles basically um okay so there we go all right i'm gonna go and reposition the camera a little bit and just like that and we'll tilt it down to the camera All right, so we're doing 2600 megahertz, 2595, 88, 89 watts, 54 degrees, 56 degrees on the CPU, GPU. Those are super cool GPU, CPU, excellent thermals all around so far. A++. Um, my Legion Pro 7i with 4090 also reaches the same clock speed using my OC settings. Nice. Well, it's very different between an RTX 4090 and an RTX 4050, but yeah, the, all the additional CUDA cores really helps boost performance like crazy in the 4090, of course. Um, so we didn't, I don't think we even busted 60 degrees during the first time spy test which is really great like that is phenomenal um yeah that's awesome to see you know i think i think if anything um like Basically, the RTX 4050 only needs around 90 watts of power to reach full performance. So I think I think we are seeing full performance out of the system. Um, like, it, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we occasionally see the system tip into the 95 watts, maybe even over a little over 100. But most of the time, um, I don't think we're going to be seeing over 90 watts very often. Um, and it won't really need it, you know? No fan noise scares me after owning a GT76. NASA would be proud of the things, of that thing's engines. <laughs> yeah, the, the MSI GT series, man, they have some crazy fans in that laptop series almost always. Um, like, I, I owned a MSI GT73 VR. And that was one of the most expensive laptops I had ever bought at that point in time. Uh, it had a GTX 980, so a 980, and it was not an M series. All of the M series, there was a 980M, and then I had a GTX 980. And a GTX 980 was based on the desktop part, not the, not the mobile version. So it actually had the same CUDA cores and everything as the desktop. So 73 degrees on the CPU here, 4.5 gigahertz, 64 watts of power there at the end. Uh, that's a pretty good time spy uh, amount. And I like that we did not spike up to 100 degrees or over 90 degrees. Um, so 8,603, 9,300 for our 
time spy results, that's pretty good. Um, if I wanted to, if I wanted to do a quick and dirty undervolt overclock, let's see if we can. What I was going to tell you about the MSI GT73 that I had is it got destroyed by an RV. It got ran over by an RV. It sucked. So, um, okay. So right now, right now it's doing uh, right around uh, 1,020. It's doing 1,020 right now. That's our, that's the node that we're on. Um, if we wanted to undervolt this to run more power efficiently, we might want to go down to something like 950. This is obviously more advanced. I did a whole guide on how to do this. Um, I'm just using shift tab to switch between the nodes. We're going down to 950. We're going to up the voltage here. Or sorry, up the cork clock up to, I don't know. Let's see if we can do 2700, which is plus 255 OC undervolt. Uh, we're going to do control L on that. All right. And then we got to pull up our after claw, afterburner and hit apply. All right. So that just switched us to... Oh, just switched us over to 2700 on the clock while at the same time our so we're doing now 2700 megahertz on the core clock for the gpu at the same time we were doing 90 something watts of power um, like 89 to 95 watts of power now we're doing 75 to 80 watts of power through the gpu our temperatures look like they've gone down a, a little bit because we were like over 60 in max fan mode before. So I would anticipate the temps to go down five degrees or so with this type of setup. I don't know if this is going to be stable long term. So far in time spot, it appears to be stable. Um, yeah, so that's that's where that's where that's a, that's called an undervolt overclock. There's a guide on how to do it on my channel, look through my history or search through my videos to find it. Um, but it's, uh, I did a live stream on it and then I also did a cut down on it. So, um, so yeah, 2,700. Let's see if we can uh, successfully run Time Spy now that we've done this overclock under volt. Uh, obviously, I don't anticipate this being the maximum possible time spy score. You might be able to push this thing even higher in terms of performance and temps and, and all that. Like, obviously, we're not going to max the temps. Like, this thing is going to stay cool no matter what. Um, and you are probably likely to successfully overclock the GPU uh, if you run it at a higher voltage. Um, so we are basically, we're not running it at maximum possible voltage. So that might cause us to crash. But basically by lowering our voltage to 950 millivolts, we're making the laptop more power efficient, which uh, essentially lets the laptop run cooler and hopefully will extend the life of the laptop because there's a less electricity running through the machine. But uh, Malevolent says, my Tough with a 3050 Ti scores 5,800 in time spy. The RTX 4050 is a good leap. Um, yeah, that's true. The 5800 is as good as a RTX 2060. Okay, so let's see if it's stable. Let's see if our... GPU can actually run at 2,700. If it doesn't run, that's okay. Uh, we don't need to actually do this whole test. I'm just, just doing a quick undervolt to see if it was successful or not. 
We're going to move into our game testing um, after we do Cinebench R23, which is next. So Cinebench R23 is next. Then we're going to do our game testing. Uh, and then we're going to do our final summary of everything that we have discovered about the laptop so far. So. He says a 2060 with 115 watts scores 7,200. Interesting. Yeah, the um, the wattage made a big difference back then. Wattage still makes a big difference, uh, but with the 40, 50, 40, 60, 40, 70, um, you can still get good performance out of lower watt parts, like better than you'd expect um, for the wattage curve. Especially if you undervolt overclock like what we're doing right now. It's kind of amazing. Fifty five degrees on the GPU, fifty one degrees on the CPU. Phenomenal temps in the Omen sixteen. Um, at least in time spy. We're going to have to do some actual game testing. I'm thinking we might push some higher temps, especially on the CPU in games like Dead Space, maybe Warzone. Um, we'll have to see the different scenarios. That's my guess, is that probably Dead Space will probably be our highest temp on this laptop, and it'll probably be a spicy CPU temp, probably over 80 uh, maybe over 90, but maybe it'll surprise us and only go up to 75, 80. So far, it looks like our undervolt overclock is stable at 2700 megahertz, which is really, really impressive. Our CPU temp going up to 75 degrees with 55, 65 watts of power going through it. That's pretty good. Luis Soto says, can't complain for $8.99. That's kind of true. So with that OC undervolt overclock, we we're only able to boost our score just slightly at 8,711. Very interesting. Nine... 1,333 for our CPU score. So not a big jump um, by undervolting overclocking, but our temperatures were reduced. That's So that's probably the main advantage to doing an overclock undervolt. Okay, so for now, we're going to just reset our uh, OC back to stock. We're going to load up Cinebench R23. And we're going to do our run. Do, 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 do. Mars says this is phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, I mean this is really good. Obviously, it is it is really good, especially for eight ninety nine, three hundred twenty four nits. Like I was surprised that it it seventy five nits bonus brightness. I was like, wait, what is brighter than what they advertised? What what? So um, yeah, that's always nice. Okay, so Cinebench R twenty three. Um, we also got to load up process lasso. I always do this just to keep things fair. I do not recommend using process lasso unless you're going for benchmarking, um, performance test, uh, like maximum performance testing, basically like trying to set benchmark records. That's what this is good for or ensuring or using it to ensure that you're getting an equalized level of performance every time. Which is basically what I'm trying to do. So uh, Process Lasso prioritizes, grabs a specific process inside of Windows, and it will let you 
Um, it'll let the Windows app, uh, interface prioritize, like, do this thing, do this one process above everything else. Okay, so here we are. We've got four performance cores and four E cores in this laptop. Wow. So this is only an eight core, 12 thread CPU. I'm like, what is this? 2021? Only having eight cores in your laptop? What is this? No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but the nice thing about only having eight cores is it probably won't need that much power. The downside here is that uh, you're not going to be able to use this laptop for, uh, or at least you, you can use this laptop for video editing. It's just not going to be as fast at video editing as other laptops that have more cores and threads, obviously, right? So, um, okay, so we're going to do some individual tests, uh, a few of these, and then we're going to examine our performance levels. Okay, so our P cores are doing 4.5 gigahertz. Our E cores are doing 3.4 gigahertz. That is excellent. And our temperature right now is 74 degrees. We're pulling 72 watts of power through the system. That is not bad at all for a budget system. Um, especially having this many cores and threads. The main downside here is that you just don't have as many cores and threads as some of the other laptops in this space, um, like the HX processor versions or the i7 processor versions are gonna have more cores and threads and you're just giving up potential performance at the same price point, basically. And there's our result, 11,953 which is not at all a bad result. It's just not as good as say 15,000 or 14 and a half thousand like the Acer Nitro 5 gets at the same price. Um, it is very competitive though. And as far as how the system is thermally designed, 66, 67 watts of power, we haven't even busted 80 degrees on the CPU yet. That is phenomenal temperature management um, from a performance thermal standpoint. And I hope this thing can just do this nonstop. So far, it has not slowed down at all, doing right around 66 watts. Now it went down to 46 watts, and now we're doing 3.7 gigahertz, okay? So there's the slowdown. There's the long-term power limit kicking in, and that's going to reduce our overall 10-minute score performance level. Um, Clark says not too shabby at all. So the Nitro five is slightly faster. Yes. The Nitro five is going to be noticeably faster, uh, cause it has more cores and threads and it still does pretty good on the temperature management. So, um, so there's 10,800. Let's do another run and we'll see what we can get down to for our primary score. Average. So notice that we're pulling 70 watts of power through the CPU. That's a good amount of power for this many cores and threads, more than enough than you would typically need for this many cores and threads. Um, now we're doing 53 watts, 55 watts. And eventually, you know, it's going to go down to the 45 watt long term power limit after usually 45 seconds to a minute ish. Um, sometimes two minutes, depending on how it's all set up. Now, if you use something like Throttle Stop or Intel XTU, you may be able to extend the power boost time limit so that you can run 70 watts of power nonstop. It, but that just depends on if HP has locked that down in the BIOS firmware for this laptop. And I don't know if they did or not. So just know that there may be more performance to be able to pull out of this laptop. But the key thing here really is no matter what you do, so we got 11,000 flat there. No matter what you do, we're gonna get our 10 minute, 10 minute score going. 
and we're gonna reset our counter so we can get our averages for 10 minutes. Oh, you know what? We're gonna stop this. We're gonna let it cool down for like 30 seconds. Um, and then we're gonna get it going. Just cause that's going to let us do the pow long-term power limit a little bit longer, which is gonna help boost the score by a little bit. Okay, so uh, we'll go ahead and get it going. <clears throat> All right. Cool bananas. What the heck? Okay. We're resetting that again. All right. Okay, so looking at um, scores from some of the other laptops, right? So, um, in Cinebench R23, the Ryzen 5 7535H on the Bravo, 9,700. So this scores better than the Bravo 15, at least in single runs. We haven't done our 10-minute run yet. These are 10-minute scores. The Acer Nitro 5 with the i5-12500H, a slightly better CPU with more cores uh, and threads, basically does a little bit better at 14,752. That's noticeably better, right? That's like 30 to 40% better. The Ryzen 5 7640H, 12,655. Again, that's better than this laptop, but not by very much this time, um, especially if you were to tweak this Omen 16 to be a have better CPU performance with Intel XDU or throttle stop. If it's compatible with the system, I don't know. Um, you could definitely likely tweak it. Um, and then you're getting, you know, 11,900, which is almost on par with this lock 16. This Nitro 5 with the Ryzen 7 6800H, 13,136. Again, very similar, not too big of a difference here. The Ryzen 7 doing a little bit better though. The Katana 15 with a very similar CPU. Uh, this one actually is a little bit worse, 9,800 9, here. Let's we'll see what we actually get in our final score. The i7 12700H, 16,000. So here's the tough F15, obviously costing quite a bit more at 1150. Stock price being 1400 for this laptop. Right now it's on sale. So this laptop obviously having a lot better Cinebench R23 score, uh, but also costing quite a bit more. So the Omen 16, you know, uh, right now the estimate in here is 12,746. This is this appears to be a little bit high on uh, the estimate because we were only getting 11,900 and something, right? So... Um, Overall, the Omen 16 providing decent CPU performance for the money, but not the ideal CPU performance for the money overall. Like, it's definitely uh, good. It's good. It's, it's not bad. It's not like a weakness or a strength, I think, in this particular instance. The biggest strength to the Omen 16 right now is primarily the temperatures when under a heavy CPU load. 64 degrees right now. You can see it right there. I have my fingers on it. 64 degrees. Um, and of course, we are only averaging 48 watts of power. 55. Uh, well, we're averaging 56 watts of power so far during this 10-minute run. Um, but it's it's far from our maximum clock speed. Our maximum clock speed being 4.5 gigahertz on the P cores, 3.4 gigahertz on the E cores, and now we're doing 3.9 and 3.0. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a marked step down because of the decreased wattage here. Um, Baca says, is it possible to force the TDP higher than default? So that is what you would use throttle stop or Intel XTU for if it's compatible with the system. Uh, you would want to raise the power limit on the CPU uh, to be basically the 70 watt power limit that is uh, in uh, for the, the short-term power limit, if it can handle that. That would be the goal, right? It's interesting. Now we're boosting up to 60 watts. 
Very interesting. 61 watts. And notice our clock speed's also bumping up to 4.2, 4.3 gigahertz. That's nice. It's interesting that it's able to do that boosting after the fact. Like it went like initially it was faster and then it went down a little bit. Uh, and then it came back up. And I wonder if it can sustain this over the long haul. You know, most laptops are programmed to, when they're under a load, they go to the maximum possible performance for a short period of time, usually 30 seconds to a minute and a half. And then it steps down in terms of its performance level to a medium to lower level of performance. Um, and that's what we saw. It went from 70 watts down to 45 watts. And now it's jumping back up to 60 watts. Super interesting. That is typically not what you see. Usually once it goes down to that 45 watt level, it stays there permanently um, for as long as you are doing a, uh, a render on the CPU. Luis says, I think this is the king at $1,000 or less right now. Maybe the Nitro 5. Um, well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure yet. Uh, I still need to do more testing. But this is certainly one of the better candidates as long as you can get it at $899. I would not pay the full $1249 retail price. Wait for this to be on sale again. It, if it went to sale for $899 once, it'll go to sale $899 again at some point, And that's when you can buy it. Um, if this runs Cyberpunk on high at over a thousand, hundred FPS, it's a winner. I said a thousand at first. Um, I bet you it, it probably can run Cyberpunk on high, over a hundred FPS, as long as you disable ray tracing. You disable ray tracing, it'll probably hit the hundred FPS mark on high settings, um, with frame gen. Um, I'm in, I'm anticipating that would be the case. Two minutes, 51 seconds left. Do, do, do. 65 watts of power now. What? This thing is going up and up in power. That is, that is very surprising. <laughs> Seventy. We've hit seventy watts again. I'm looking at the wattage right here. Seventy again. And notice our clock speed: four point five, three point four. Oh, that's that's really cool. Like 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 I said, most laptops cannot do that. Um, the biggest issue, then, in my opinion, for this system is. Uh, just it's it's primarily just the fact that it's it's a lower amount of cores and threads in this CPU just in general, you know? So like the amount of performance you're going to get when you're doing multi-core rendering or multi-core video games, there are some games that can out out there that can take advantage of um all of the threads these days. Um those games are just uh you know, they're not going to have as high of performance as a laptop that has more cores and threads. So it's just, it's just going to depend on the application. That said, most of the games these days still only use um, four cores or less, usually one core in the majority of games. Um, but sometimes they are using four, six, or eight cores, um, or potentially as many cores as you got. Um, so it depends. Luis Soto says, laptop tech has changed so much in the past three years. Yeah, it really has. It's, it's, a, it's a shocking amount of change. Um, we went, you know, from the RTX 2000 series to 3000 series. It was a big jump in performance. And then uh, the 30, you know, and then at the same time, we also added a whole bunch of more cores in the Intel 
um 12th gen series and now 13th gen even more cores and threads like 24 core 32 thread laptop cpu what it's crazy and then um the rtx 4090 laptop gpu being as powerful as a desktop 3090 is also insane like w w super not expected to see that big of a jump in laptop performance uh, in one generation. It's one of the biggest laptop generational gaps in terms of uh, high-end level of performance from high-end, high-end, high-end. So, um, okay, so at the end, our core clocks average 4.3 gigahertz on the P cores, 3.3 gigahertz on the E cores, 73 degrees on the CPU, 61.8 watts of power during the time, 11,600 and 74 that is very good for our overall cpu performance better than i was thinking i thinking i was thinking we we're going to get less than eleven thousand. we ended up getting eleven thousand six hundred. i think if you were able to get the tdp to go to 70 uh watts of power all the time maybe even 75 watts of power if it can go that high with a uh, throttle stop or intel xtu you could probably bust the twelve thousand mark i don't think you're going to be able to undervolt this cpu but um, at least being able to get a consistently high TDP would help boost your CPU performance to another level. Okay, so um, this is the Omen Gaming Hub. Let's just go over it really quick. You can buy peripherals in here. You can see your basic stuff. Um, there is a light studio. I don't think this laptop is gonna have any additional lighting settings other than keyboard backlight brightness and turning it off and on. But uh, we can check. Um, under the Omen 16 tab is where you can control your system vitals. Okay, so you've got your, uh, all of your data here for your network, your GPU, CPU utilization, RAM utilization. Under the advanced tab, I actually like the advanced tab a lot. You can see what each of your, your cores on your CPU are doing, your package power, your GPU information, um, and your temperature, as well as your RAM utilization and network utilization. So it's kind of a like an HW info built into the software, which is cool. Not quite as advanced as HW info, but it's cool to see. Uh, like I said, your network booster, this is going to let you prioritize certain applications for your network bandwidth. I usually don't worry about it. Honestly, I don't think most people will want to worry about it. Um, like I said, and then you have your performance control uh, tab inside of the Omen 16 here. Uh, this is where you set your fan profile and your fan speeds here. And then, of course, your MUX switch for going to hybrid mode for better battery life or discrete mode for slightly better gaming performance. It's not a huge deal. Honestly, if you're gonna unplug this a lot, just keep it in hybrid mode unless you're gonna be doing esports gaming where you're gonna see the biggest gains in performance. Then I would be sure to switch to discrete graphics uh, if you're gonna do your esports games. For AAA games, you probably won't even notice the difference though um, in the vast majority of games for uh, using the MUX switch or not. Depends on the game but most games you're not gonna see more than a 1% bump in performance. Um, do you recommend the GTX 950M? Uh, if you were in, like, what is it, 2016, then maybe if you were on a budget in 2016, but don't buy that now. That's not a good GPU now. Uh, it would barely be able to run any of the latest games if you had a 950M. Probably not even like you try to load Last of Us into, into a 950M, it probably won't even run, most likely. Um, okay. So, and, uh, and as far as how I would prioritize this, I would probably just set it to balanced mode uh, or, or just, honestly, I would leave it on auto fans if it was me and I would probably keep it on balanced mode. Balanced, phones, balanced mode auto fans will give you 95, 97% of the performance uh, and it'll be just as good pretty much. Setup tutorial for Logitech. Uh, yeah, there's no devices here. 
It's interesting. So the, this is the light Omen Light Studio. If you have, if you get an Omen 16 that has RGB um, keyboard or other lights on it, you can control that in this software. It doesn't look like you can actually control it at all in here, which makes sense because there's, it's just a single zone white keyboard. Um, okay. So going into our game testing, we've done all of the things up to right here. So Apex Legends is our next game to test. Let's see if we can get into a match uh, as well as test for uh, performance inside of this esports title and all of that. Um, so Apex Legends is next and then we've got uh, I believe Warzone after that and then CSGO. Alright, so I gotta get I gotta reposition my chair a little bit so I can control a player in the game. Ooh, I can hear the audio coming through quite loudly for the game. That's good. I gotta say, uh, the colors on this display do come through pretty well because of the brightness. Like, it's not like the brightest display. Obviously, it's not the brightest display, but it's pretty good. Like, it's 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 not bad. Uh, Louis says 150 FPS is my guess. Uh, yeah, maybe. It seems likely. Clark says the Omen 17 is one of the fastest 4090 laptops and the cheapest. That is true. Um, it's right up there in performance with the other 4090 laptops. Well, at the same time, it's really inexpensive compared to many other laptops. Okay, so let's go into the firing range. So right now we're in uh, high settings. Uh, I need to change some settings. Auto sprint is on. Wee! This is extremely smooth. Okay, so here we are. And the important thing to keep in mind about uh, this game, my big focus is checking uh, for any ghosting or any like screen tearing, uh, that kind of stuff. Because as far as I can tell, this laptop does not have G-Sync. Um, all right, so... Uh, Right now we're in high settings. This is what high settings FPS looks like. 133, 107. So we're almost to the high, uh, the highest possible refresh rate, but I, I'm pretty sure our 1% low is gonna get a lot better. I'm gonna reduce the volume. Okay, and um, hmm, okay. Let's go ahead and set everything to low. All 
Okay, so here we are. We are on low settings now. 215 FPS at 1080p resolution on low settings in Apex Legends. And I can tell you that this is a good display, but it's not great display for esports because I do see a slight delay. I can visually tell there's a slight um, screen tearing effect when moving the camera very quickly. And if you were to pause the live stream while I'm doing this right now, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. There'll be a slight ghosting on the display um, where you can see like multiple of the dude in front of me at once, which is just cause it's the screen's not refreshing as fast as I ideally want. Now, let me make sure that we are in 144 FPS cause last time in the last live stream, we were not at 144, um, FPS. Yeah. It feels like we might be only at 60 right now. We are at 60. Move it to 144. Let's see if it's better. I hope this is better. Oh, that feels a lot better. Let's see. Let's go ahead and do some shooting now. Oh, yeah. This is good. Okay. Excellent. That's something that, like, it's so interesting that I can tell that. And I just got to remember to double check that we're in 144 refresh rate. That's one thing that a lot of people don't check when they're setting up the laptop. And I can just tell that it was not very smooth. There was definitely some ghosting going on. And that's because of the refresh rate. So now, now watch when I do this kind of left and right. There's a lot less ghosting going on with the dude. It's easier to track and follow. It's like updating smoothly. And if I was aiming at somebody, I'd be able to correct my aim and make better predictions about where my aim is supposed to go. Which is obviously crucial when you're playing video games, right? So, um... So there you go, 215 FPS, 140, 142, 141 for our 1% lows is phenomenal in Apex Legends. Let's go ahead and try to get into a match and see if we can kill a few people. See if we can get into some gun run. Luis Soto says, all right, going to Best Buy right now. <laughs> Luis, if you do want to help support me as a content creator, you can use the link in the description to make your purchase and do a pickup order uh, Best Buy. Uh, but that said, um, I don't know if you want to buy this right now at the full price. I, I don't, I, you'd want to really want to wait for it to go on sale again for $8.99. Yeah, that'd be my recommendation. Um, connecting to match, hopefully it gets us into a gun run match. Oh, it's switching to deathmatch. Nah, that's okay. Deathmatch is fun too. Um, I was playing Apex Legends the other day. I did not win. Well, my team did win Gun Run, I guess, but we did not win. I didn't. I played a couple rounds of Battle Royale and we lost. So, um, I've been. I don't, like I love Apex Legends. I've played like oh, thousands of hours of Apex Legends. Um, and uh, it's a phenomenal game. I think I've just I've just uh, it's frustrating for me once I once you're really good at a game and then you take a break from the game and you come back to the game and then you're not as good anymore. That's always frustrating, right? You're like, oh, why can't I be as good as I used to be? Well, you gotta practice like a ton. like you know. Like I practiced for like hundreds of hours before I got as good as I was. And then when you take a break, it just, it doesn't all immediately come back instantly. Right. So we'll work on getting my muscle memory back today. Yes. <laughs> okay. What character do I want? We'll do Pathfinder.
Do 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 do. That's the problem. Each game needs thousands of hours, and there's thousands of games. Yeah, you really gotta pick your. Uh, you really gotta pick your game that you want to invest in carefully, right? Um, what do I want to do? Let's do a little sniping. That sounds fun. We'll do sniping for a round and see if we can get some kills with a sniper rifle. Oh, crap. Where'd this guy go? Well, he lagging out. Whoa, the servers. <laughs> He's jumping. Hey, we did 155 damage. We needed to do 20 more. We would have killed him. All right, so. Charge up our sniper rifle. I successfully hit our teammate. Nail them. Dang it. Come on back. Where'd this guy go? All right, teammate, help me out. Okay, this is uh, this is playing really well. Like, it doesn't really get much better than this in terms of gameplay experience and fun factor. Obviously, the best way probably to make that better experience would be to add 240 uh, hertz refresh rate with a, a machine that's capable of running at 240 hertz. Um, so that's probably the main thing. We're landing a lot of shots, we're just not getting a lot of kills right now. Dang, we got flanked from behind. Should have guessed. Okay, all right, so there's Apex Legends. <laughs> Obviously, very good gameplay. The game felt really responsive. A really good uh, FPS overall. Let's hop into Warzone. Artem says, just got to say, you're helping me pick my new college gaming laptop. Got to get one with the Prime Day deals. It's a good time to pick one up because there's a lot of competition right now. Um, and a lot of prices just dropped big time on a lot of these laptops so um obviously the sale on this omen 16 was a few days ago but i'm sure they'll be i'm sure it'll go on sale again for 8.99 at some point and that's probably the best time to buy this 40 50 version but artem i'm glad i can help you out that is my goal as a reviewer to be as helpful to Everyone out there, you know, like, like that's literally the goal of my channel, just to help people out 
make it as easy as possible to, to find a laptop. So we're going to set a minimum spec. DLSS on quality. Textures go to high. Apply these settings. Cool. Here we go. Battle Royale War Call of Duty Warzone. So Warzone. Let's talk about what it needs you need for a laptop for Warzone. Uh, you want good quality CPU performance. That is your priority. Usually you want multi-core performance as well, at least to some extent. We do have four P cores in this laptop, so that's a decent number of P cores, but not as many as the newer laptops. A lot of the newer laptops either have six or eight P cores. Um, and yeah, I think this, this game usually prefers six or eight P cores. So um, P cores meaning performance cores. They're the fatter, more power hungry, higher clock speed cores. Um, notice that we're pulling 4.5 gigahertz on our P cores right now. 39 watts of power. We're probably not even going to pull um, like our 90 watt limit for the RTX 4050. We'll probably only do 40 to 60 watts on the GPU. So um, that's, wh that's why I like testing this game. I like uh, having um, a game that's very CPU focused. So when you get a, an i5 laptop like this, you can see the limitations that you get with the i5 CPU. So. LSP says, thank you. Your reviews helped me choose the Legion Pro 7i with the 4090. It runs multiple emulators and games really well. Thank you. Yeah, no problem, LSP. Glad I can help. Uh, we might have to mute the audio. Because you never know what random people are going to say, and I need to keep this family friendly if I can. <laughs> okay, so... Here we are. So 61 FPS right now. People in this game are so durable. Someone over here is shooting at us. So 57 FPS, 26 for our 1% low right now. That's not amazing. Uh, yeah, not amazing. It's obviously very playable, but it's like if you're trying to compete in an esports game, usually I would personally really want to target 90 FPS. Um, this is where comparing all of the different... Um, Laptops around this budget point. If Warzone 2 is your game, this laptop might not be the one for you. Because I'm pretty sure you're going to get a little bit a little bit higher FPS with some of the other laptops out there. Okay, so here we go. We're going to go to our Warzone land zone. Landing zone. That we test every time. Whoa, it like didn't deploy our parachute until last second right there. Okay. Okay, so. Here we go. 70, 67 FPS. 65 FPS. 41 for our 1% low. That's a pretty good 1% low considering we're only getting 64 FPS. That's going to ensure that uh, the gameplay feels pretty smooth. But overall, 63 FPS is not amazing. It's really not that good. Um, and it's the kind of thing that I think a lot of people are going to wish they got higher FPS if you're a Warzone player and you're buying this laptop. So um, I'm very curious to see what, what, the, um, what did the Nitro 5 get? Oh, yes. That's a nice gun. Okay. Um, so I'm going to let this 
I'm gonna let this sit here. I'm gonna check my Nitro 5 review here. And. This one, this Nitro 5 review also has a bunch of other benchmarks so we can easily see. Oh, well, did I do a war zone? I didn't do Warzone on this laptop. Let me see here. Let's go. Uh, let me go ahead and check. We'll check the Acer Predator Helios Neo 16, which has an i5-13500HX, which is a lot better CPU. All right, so this is the gameplay testing. So you can see the Acer Predator Helios Neo 16 is getting like 80 FPS. See that, 87 FPS. 62 so so yeah like that's that's really showing you the power of of having a, a higher amount of cores in the system so i'm pretty sure that i5 13500 hx has uh six p cores and like uh four e cores or something like that so the more cores it has it really helps boost um performance in games like warzone so you're going to want to look for a laptop with more cores if you're after um, a warzone performance basically so we're on the omen 16 again here let's see if we can uh help our teammate kill this person i saw someone running around over here are they not here anymore I'm being point man for our squad right now. I'm in the front of my all four teammates. We're hunting like an assassination target right now. Friendly airstrike in the AO. I probably oh I just hit him. I probably just made my teammates mad by uh, shooting this guy. So we've got guys above us here. Can I climb this? Oh, come on. You can do it. Come on. Oh, come on. I'm trying to parkour this mountain. It's not going very well. She just ran up the side. Come on. Oh, oh, yes. Where's this guy? Ooh, they're hitting us. This is like the first time I've gotten into a full-on squad-on-squad battle with uh, in Warzone here. Oh, we almost killed that guy. It was so close. Oh no. Guy point blank rushed us. All right. So that gives a good example of Warzone 2. Around 60 FPS with this laptop. Not, uh, not bad. It's definitely playable, but it's not good. It's not like... Yes, I just I got the latest technology and it's like killing it and it's like you know 90 FPS. It's not as smooth, right? Like especially for an esports game, 90 FPS versus 60 FPS, that's a 50% performance gain roughly. So 
Maybe there's ways to tweak the laptop to get more performance, but I don't know. I, I wouldn't count on it, right? So. Uh, okay. So. Neo 16 CPU is pulling 70 watts compared to this. Yeah. Well, it also, the, the Neo 16 has a higher core count HX processor that uh, it, it has more CPU performance for multi-core rendering as well as um, as well as uh, for games like Warzone that use multi cores, multiple cores. So, okay, so here we are in Counter Strike. Dun dun. Okay. So, um, CSGO is a very single-threaded CPU-focused game to where it's it's not as reliant on multiple cores. You can see we're getting 500 FPS right now. So very, I'm expecting very good performance here. Um, easily more than 144 FPS almost always, except when in smoke. Right now we're doing 400 FPS. The FPS counter, of course, is right down here in the, uh, the bottom middle. Um, CSGO does not allow overlays, so I cannot show you all of the detailed overlay like I normally do. We're bouncing between 200 and 300 FPS right now. There is smoke on the screen, but we're about to go through the smoke. Um, one of the key indicators to me for performance is what is the FPS like right as you go into the smoke? How low does it go? Right as we turn around here, you'll see we're getting down to 80, 70. Wow, that's actually really good. Uh, stayed in the 70s. A lot of laptops uh, go down into the 45, 50 range. Um, the best laptops go down to like 80 to 90, uh, like 90, 95, I think, for the new i9 chips. Um, so again, 75 FPS, even in smoke. That is excellent for CSGO game players. Uh, CSGO players. The only downside is this is not a 240 hertz refresh rate display. It's only a 144 hertz refresh rate display. So you're just not going to get quite as responsive of a um, display as a high, a faster one. But this is still very good. Um, still good for, especially for a budget system. No ghosting on the display. Very fast response rate, and uh, obviously very high FPS in the gameplay itself. So let's see what we got for our average. 352. hundred and fifty two point one nine right here. So very, very good. I got doggies whining at me. Hero, you want to come here? Hero, come here. Uh, okay, so let's check what our next game is. God of War. Let's go. All right. So God of War, um, a PlayStation console, made-for-console game, AAA-focused title, focused primarily on excellent graphics. Um, so we're looking to hit around 60 FPS, if we can, on ultra settings, and then it is a very excellent gameplay. Obviously, we don't want any severe stuttering as well. So if we can hit around 60 FPS with 45 for our 1% lows, then that's superb. Um, excellent gameplay. Now, it is an action game. So the ideal ideal would be like 90 FPS, which maybe if you said it's a low settings, maybe you could hit at 90 FPS. But uh, I'm not sure. We'll have to see. Okay, so we're on ultra settings.
Ultra settings. Go to our display. We want to be 16 by 9 aspect ratio. That's correct. DLSS is on quality. So that means we are upscaling just a little bit. But it's going to look really crisp and clear for our upscaling. Okay, so 50... We're hitting around 50, 66 FPS looking over here in the corner. That's a little higher than normal, considering. Um, okay, so here we are. Let's go ahead and do our test. 55 FPS, 49 for our 1% low. So we're not really stuttering hardly at all. Um, and this is obviously going to be very good gameplay. Not quite hitting in the ideal range. Well, 65 FPS now. Okay, so 58, 47. That's almost ideal for, like, perfect gameplay in God of War. Or, like, not quite perfect because it's, like, not high refresh rate gaming. Um, obviously, if we were to go in here and change our settings to something low. Let's see what we get in low settings. On low settings, now we're doing 120. So you can decide where you want to be uh, in terms of graphical settings and get excellent performance um, or high. You, you can either go for maximum clarity in terms of details and graphics and post processing effects, or you can go for high refresh rate gaming on the Omen 16. Um, perfect. Okay, so next up, we have Cyberpunk 2077. Let's go. Ninja Warrior says, I decided to buy the Monster GT 77 Titan with a 4090. Did you really? <laughs> you know, you could buy a car instead. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, is 8 gig of VRAM good for long-term 1440p gaming? No, it's not really. Uh, unless you're willing to turn down the settings frequently in new titles, and eventually you won't be able to even um, make that work for you eventually. Uh if you're willing to tweak the settings, it'll it'll work. Eight gigs of VRAM will work, but it's certainly the kind of thing where you're gonna gamers are gonna have to get better and better at tweaking settings if if in, unless Nvidia ups the VRAM in next generation. Um, all the laptops you buy with only eight gigs of VRAM with QHD resolution, um, just know you're gonna have to turn the textures down to probably medium in most of the new games, um, even right now today. Uh, maybe not most of the new games. The most demanding new games. That is going to be true. Um, okay, so. We're at 1080p full screen. Graphics are going to go to ray tracing on ultra. Frame generation enabled. DLSS to quality. All right, so... Ray Tracing Ultra, 1080p, frame generation enabled, DLSS on quality. That's all correct. Let's go ahead and see what we get. All right? Come here, Mr. Hero. Come here. What's going on? What are you doing, huh? What are you doing? Oh, my. Hero is needing something. Maybe he needs to do the outdoor world thing. Okay, so... Here we are, Cyberpunk 2077. We're doing 68 FPS, 23 for our 1% low. Um, we are maxing our VRAM at 6 gigs of VRAM with this RTX 4050. So that's obviously a concern, but as long as we don't run into severe stuttering, then I'm not too worried. That said, our 1% lows are doing pretty good at 32 right now, 71 FPS. Uh, obviously going to be very playable with frame generation. That means we're going to have AI frames integrated in between the real frames. Um, and typically speaking, uh, I would prefer to use frame gen when I'm doing 90 plus FPS. So the AI frames 
uh, and the little glitches caused by them um, are less noticeable. That said, 70 plus FPS is still pretty good for frame gen. Not amazing, but uh, still. It's going to be playable. It's going to look pretty dang good. So 74 FPS, 74.01 FPS for our benchmark ultra settings, ray tracing enabled, DLSS 3 enabled, and frame gen enabled. Let's go to a gameplay section and play a little bit of Cyberpunk 2077 and see how it handles some actual gameplay. Uh, hey Gizmo, what do you think about my PC? I've got a 2070 Super and a Ryzen 5 3600. Should I upgrade 16 gigs of VRAM? So a 2070 Super is not a bad GPU by any means uh, if you're just going for 1080p gaming. Um, if, if that's all you're going for, then that's great. Now, obviously, if you play the latest and greatest titles and you're like, you know, you're trying to push uh, high FPS in the latest and greatest titles, that's where you're going to struggle a little bit more. If you're okay with, um, let me go to, let me get loaded in here and I'll continue. Um, you know, if you're okay with playing on lower and medium settings in some of the newer titles at 1080p, then a 2070 Super is still going to work pretty dang well. Um, now, if you're trying to push like esports gaming, at high FPS, I'm pretty sure that Ryzen 5 is going to bottleneck you pretty hard. And you probably wouldn't want to upgrade your motherboard and CPU, maybe your RAM as well, obviously, if you're getting a new motherboard, um, as your top priority. Uh, and then if you, uh, if you, uh, after that upgrade, then I would consider jumping up to something like uh 3070 ti or maybe like a, a used rtx 3080 gpu that might be a good option um another good option i don't know obviously if you have the money for it and you want to go to qhd gaming getting something with more vram would be phenomenal like an rtx 4080 for uh, desktop or you could go with a laptop um and just replace the whole system with a, a laptop and not have to worry about anything right uh, okay, so here we are. Omen 16, RTX 4050, ray tracing on Ultra. I have reset our one our uh, our benchmark numbers here. This is playing really well. It's playing really smoothly. Um, even though these are some frame generation frames, it still feels quite good. Frame generation primarily downside is integrate in, in, uh, causing slightly more lag. Uh, slightly more input lag into the system. It's honestly, it's barely noticeable if you're playing high FPS games. It's a lot more noticeable when you're doing less than 60 FPS in the game. This guy, of course, has to shoot down the wall. Okay, so we averaged 70 FPS, 34 for our 1% lows during that gameplay. Uh, for the fun of it, let's just try swapping over to high settings with frame generation on and DLSS on quality. Gotta let the game load in. Then it'll bump our frame rate up. Okay, all right, so there it is. 133, 140 FPS. Uh, this is so smooth. It looks absolutely amazing. Great. This would be great. This is probably the way I would play the game if I was playing this game on this laptop because this would be super smooth for aiming and firing and shooting and fighting and everything. So um, there's an example of Cyberpunk 2077 on high settings, 1080p, frame generation enabled. Okay. 
Our next game that we're playing is going to be Hogwarts. Uh, Harambe says the ROG Strix G15 Advantage Edition 6800M is the best value card of this generation. Um, I would I would not agree with that uh, unless it's like $1,100 for that laptop. Like $1,100 is pretty good. But like there was an Alienware M17 R5 with the 6850M XT. That sucker was $11.99 this last weekend. I don't know if it's still on sale or not, but uh, that was a really good value if you're a fan of Radeon GPUs. Um, it was a, I think, a 360 hertz full HD display, though. So it's a different type of display than the G15 Advantage, which has a QHD display. So, uh, yeah. But the Advantage Edition, when it's on sale, oof, that was awesome. And two years ago, when it was full price, it was still a good value back when it was full price. Now, Now it's just... Now I'd say it's about the same tier as a 3070 Ti, which I would only really recommend at the $1,100 price point right now. Ninja Warrior, you're going to get the GT77. You just really want that 4K display, huh? Yeah, I mean, that 4K mini LED display is gorgeous. It's, you're going to love it for story games. It's going to be amazing for story games. Shadowy wants a G14 with an OLED display. But what about burn-in? <laughs> I mean, I think OLED displays look really good, but I think they pretty much universally suffer from burn-in eventually. So, like, think about, like, four years from now, like, the start menu is probably going to have burn-in as an example. Or maybe, like, the clock in the bottom right corner. Shadowy says fake news. It, it's something I would have on my radar. Um, and if I had an OLED laptop, I would probably make the start menu um, have like a timer or something to where it like disappears. Uh, okay, so we're going to go in. We're going to set textures to low. Everything's going to be on ultra. Ray tracing is enabled. To apply settings, you have to restart even with textures on low. What? I thought textures didn't need to restart. Is a Predator Helio 16 with the i9 13900HX, 32 gigs of RAM, one terabyte SSD, a 4080 for $2,400, a decent deal. Hmm. Does it come with the QHD 250 hertz mini LED display? If it comes with the, the mini LED display, I would say that's a very good deal. If it doesn't come with the mini LED display, I'd say it's like a decent deal, you know, like it's pretty good, but it's not a good, it's not a great deal. $2,400, $4080. I mean, 32 gigs of RAM at that price is good. The i9-13900HX is pretty good at that price. But unless it's got the special display, I would say it's just an okay deal. Like, cause there's a lot, it's like, it's, it's like competitive with a lot of other um, high-end laptops at that point, but it doesn't outshine the other laptops. Um, at 2400.
Shadow Wee says, fans are loud. Are you talking about this laptop or are you talking about uh, Zephyrus G14? These fans are loud, but we are running Max fans right now. When this laptop does not need Max fans, this laptop has great thermals, great cooling, um, even on like balance mode. So, Big Fool, so uh, Big says it's a 2560 by 1600, 240 hertz. Is it mini LED? I don't think it's a mini LED. Probably not a mini LED, unfortunately. Serious Sam, the all, uh, we are we are checking out Hogwarts with everything maxed, uh, just not textures, because textures in Hogwarts cause bad one percent low stuttering. So that's why. In every laptop I've ever tested, it causes 1% low stuttering. Um, at 1080p, especially, yeah, it's just, it, it, like, it, wants, it wants like way more VRAM than what a laptop has. A Flow X16 with a 4080 or 4090 would have been the perfect laptop. The problem is a Flow X16 is so thin that the power limit on it is not going to be you know, it's not. It's certainly not going to be 175. I'm not sure exactly how high they go. Um, can it do the full 140 watts? I don't know. Okay, so like, look at our look at our VRAM. We're at 5.2 gigs on low settings. Uh, so that basically, this basically means we're maxing our VRAM already on low settings. That's it's Hogwarts is. Just insane. Okay, so we've got to make sure that our other settings are correct, though. Um, DLSS is on quality. Frame generation is enabled. Frame rate is uncapped. Everything's on ultra with ray tracing enabled. Very good. If you want to boost your FPS in Hogwarts, it's quite simple. You just turn off ray tracing, and it's going to be much higher FPS. Uh, okay, so we're going to just kind of... Uh, Gander through Hogsmeade real quick before we do our benchmark run. Hogsmeade being the most difficult area of the game to run because there are so many NPCs and buildings and textures and everything. Um, so Now, I did play through Hogwarts all the way to the end. I really loved Hogwarts. It's, uh, it's a fun game. It's, uh, it's well written. The storyline's fun. Um, the world feels very vibrant. It's a fun open world game and there's a lot of stuff to do. Um, so I would recommend it. All right. Uh, here we are looking real quick at our temperatures, 57 degrees, 65 on the CPU, 4.5 gigahertz on the CPU. That's good. 37, 38 watts. We are being CPU bound. Notice our GPU is only at 82% utilization. Um, and only 67, 65 watts to that GPU. So because there's so many NPCs, we ended up being CPU bound. Let's go ahead and do our run through. Here we go. I reset the counter. 76 for our average FPS. 37 for our 1% lows. Is actually very good. It's uh, it's very good for Hogwarts. Okay, so thirty three for our one percent low, seventy one for our average. Uh, you know, most laptops end up stuttering more than thirty three. So our one percent low being only thirty three is very good. 71 is pretty good, but I, like I said, if I was playing this game on this laptop, I would just disable ray tracing, and then you're going to get a, quite a big bump, probably into the 90 to 100 FPS range, and it would help raise your 1% lows as well. So anyway, there's the Hogwarts test. The next game on our list is Dead Space. So Dead Space is a very CPU intensive game. Uh, it's a uh, very GPU intensive game as well, but especially at 1080p, you might even be, we might even be CPU bound, though it's only an RTX 4050, so maybe not. Um, 
I'm guessing we will be CPU bound because it's we have an i5. The bigger question in my mind is, what are the temperatures gonna be like with the i5 chip in the Omen? This is likely gonna be the highest temperatures that we're gonna see on the chip ever because it's gonna be pulling, look at that, 55 watts. We'll see when we actually get into the game, but likely pulling 55 to 60 watts, which is as much as we pulled in Cinebench R23, but at the same time, we're gonna be playing the game. Um, so the GPU is gonna be fully engaged and we have shared we have shared heat pipes on this laptop. Graphics qualities we want to set to ultra. Ultra preset, video options, 1080p, 144 hertz. All of this looks correct and good. We will continue and we'll just see what we get here. Sitting here, looking at the uh, Shimura. Logo there, let's see what we get. 79 degrees to the CPU. Can the laptop keep the CPU temp below 80? That would be, ooh, that would be so nice. Very, very few laptops this year have managed to keep the CPU temps below 80 degrees in dead space. So, uh, so far it looks like this laptop might pull it off. 83, 80. I mean, 80 is still pretty good though. Keeping it below 90 is kind of like really the piece de resistance. Um, okay, so this is again, all ultra settings, no frame generation, DLSS on quality. It's looking good. It's looking very good. David G says, with all your experience with all these laptops, is it worth getting a mini LED display, let's say, versus a good IPS panel? David G, great question. I decided not to go mini LED because the Blade 18 does not offer a mini LED. If the Blade 18 had a mini LED, I would get the mini LED upgrade, um, but it doesn't have it. So if you're getting a laptop that sometimes can have mini LED or does not have it sometimes, uh, then I would recommend getting the mini LED version if you can. Um, and if you're comparing between two laptops that have a mini LED and don't have a mini LED, then the mini LED is a nice boost, but a really good IPS panel is still really good. Like my Blade 18 monitor does like 560 nits. It's extremely high color gamut, pretty dang good contrast but it's not as high a color gamut or as contrast as like the GT77. Um, and so, yeah, like if I could have gotten a mini LED version, I would have, but I couldn't. So is it worth it jumping ship for me to go with like the SCAR 16 with the mini LED? It wasn't because the Blade 18 was a really great laptop, better I think than the SCAR 16 in terms of its build quality and the webcam it has on it and the speakers it has on it. And I valued all the overall package more than that mini LED display. So that's basically where I'm at with the mini LED versus IPS. Um, it's only worth going to the mini LED display option laptop if the other features are roughly the same. Like it's a strong feature, but for me it's not a deal breaker type feature between because when you're looking at most content, it's harder to tell the difference. It's really like high contrast or high peaky brightness type content where you see them in the mini LED really shine. Okay, here we go. Here we go. We're doing our benchmark for Dead Space. 71 FPS, 28 for our 1% low. Obviously extremely playable, very good gameplay here in Dead Space. And honestly, these temps are really, really good for Dead Space. Way above average um, in terms of like temperature versus performance versus wattage utilization. Um, it's putting out great FPS while at the same time being 
a uh, good amount of wattage. Now, I don't know that this is the highest performance that we've seen in dead space with an RTX 4050, probably not, but it's some of the best, best dang temperatures we've seen. That's for sure. So overall, this is gonna be good. It's gonna be a great gaming experience in dead space. Um, not really have any problems there. Last of Us Part One, let's go. Okay, and my dogs are all hoofing at me. I'm gonna let them out real quick while, while we're loading into Last of Us. So I'll just be right back as it loads in. You need to go outside? Okay, this little guy is what interrupted our live stream. He's got his hero. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you had to use the bathroom, didn't you, little buddy? Uh-huh. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and move into our last of us. Test. So we are at 1080p. We want to go to DLSS, quality. For graphics, we're gonna be ultra settings with textures on medium. All right. Cool, and we should have all of the shaders preloaded on uh, Last of Us today. So loading time should be reduced, maybe performance slightly improved. Okay, I see a lot of chat activity. Let me check out chat. Okay, I have reset our FPS counter. Let's see what we're at. So 58 degrees on the GPU, it's very good. 73 on the CPU, pretty high CPU demand in this game. Usually, usually CPU doesn't seem that um, 
as intensive as this, Ninety two FPS right now is very impressive for ultra settings, medium. I'm guessing it's because we let the shaders preload. This seems higher FPS than normal. Yes. That would be my guess. Okay, so we're getting phenomenal FPS. Um, I want to do a quick audio example. We'll do audio uh, auto fans with balance mode. All right. And we're going to turn up the audio to the loudest it can go. So you can hear the gameplay mixed with um, the onboard speaker audio. Let's, let's see how it sounds. You get the money for this. Drugs. I sell hardcore drugs. Oh, good. We started helping out with the mortgage then. Yeah, you wish. So we had one big stutter in the middle of that cinematic. Um, <clears throat> man, this audio sounds so good. Hello? Sarah, honey, I need to get your daddy on the phone. Uh, Uncle Tommy, what, what time is it? I need to talk to your dad now. Uh, Uncle Tommy? Hello? Like these speakers are loud. They're pretty dang clear. At least in this game mode, it sounds really good. Like What was that all about? Honestly, and when you compare that with Dad? the quiet speakers, this thing puts out a great gaming experience without headphones. Daddy? I need to get a new lens. A little, there's some like, some smearing going on because I dropped my camera and it cracked the lens. It actually cracked the lens cap. So overall, Last of Us is doing awesome. The temps were still very good. Uh, let's go to max fans, max performance. Um, I'm very, I'm very impressed. Let's go to Dying Light 2. The crash of us, let's go. <laughs> yeah. It was very bad at launch. Uh, I think it's gotten better though. Cody says, I ended up getting the Scar 18. Amazing screen on that laptop, even with no mini LED. Yeah, the display is very similar to my Blade 18.
The display quality is very similar to my Blade 18 on the Scar 18. It's very good. Michael says, hi, do you think the Acer Nitro 17 R7 7840HS 4060 is worth it at $1,200? What display does that come with, Michael? How big is the SSD and how much RAM? At $1,200, that's a pretty steep price. It is a large laptop, which usually costs like $100 more, but... Um, if it comes with 16 gigs of RAM and a full HD display, that's a high quality, 100% sRGB display, then 1200 is a decent price. If the display is like a crappier one, that's when I would say you probably, you probably wouldn't want to save your money. Uh, or like go for, wait for it to go down to 1100. If the display is high quality though, or if it's a QHD high quality one, then that's probably most likely definitely worth it. DLSS is phenomenal technology, but when we go on higher, it results in increasing the frame rate. Cody, did you get any coil wine on your SCAR 17 with a 4080? It's not terrible. Oddly enough, I only heard it when on battery. I played CSGO and COD for a couple hours yesterday, and if there was any, it was quiet. Interesting. Yeah, well, if you use headphones when you game, you won't hear coil wine. It's not very loud. It's really when you play games without headphones or when you're doing demanding tasks without headphones, that's when you really hear the coil whine. So frame generation is enabled, high quality ray tracing, DLSS 3 with frame gen on, DLSS on quality. It's time to benchmark, let's go. Yeah, it's amazing that Last of Us was uh, so poorly optimized that it was, it reached negative Steam reviews. It's one of the, one of those games. <clears throat> that said, I think the biggest issue was VRAM limitations. And uh, a lot of the older GPUs only had like four gigs of VRAM and it just literally wasn't compatible with GPUs with only 40 gigs of VRAM. So, you needed to have at least six at 1080p, um, usually 12 for QHD, especially if you want the higher settings. So right now we're doing 88 FPS in Last of Us with high quality settings and ray tracing enabled, frame generation enabled. So this is gonna be extremely playable. Our temps are excellent on the CPU and the GPU both. We're being primarily GPU bound, which is great to see. 80 watts to the GPU. Once again, demonstrating that the Omen 16 is quite good at 1080p gaming. Even with all of the settings set to max, it's still it's still playing the games quite well. Which is, I like, I don't know. If you would have told me a couple of years ago that a $899 laptop was gonna be able to play every game at max settings at 1080p, I'd be like, what? Nah, probably not. Yep, it does pretty much. It's like, it's pretty amazing. Okay, so <clears throat> we ended up with 93.8 FPS. That's pretty dang good. Our 1% load is obviously not valid as it loads between different scenes. It like messes it up, but okay. So next up we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider.
Exclusive full screen, 144 hertz, DLSS on quality, highest graphical settings, ray tracing set to ultra. Let's go. LSP says, good doggo, by the way. I just saw that comment. He is a good doggo. Hero is a very good boy. He came and got me. So he didn't uh, make a mess in the house. I had to let him out. Stream is lagging. Oh no. Okay, is it working now? Still dropping frames. Okay, testing. Still dropping frames. 